Um, you know, obviously, I've I've played I've played football. I've been in the preseason games for four years now. So, um, you know, I, I I think it's be a great opportunity. As far as what he has learned from backing up Joe Flacco. Yeah, he's just seen so much uh, playing for as many years as he has. So he's he's seen defenses. He knows the little nuances that defenses will try to play him and, and his skill set. So, um, you know, I think coverage wise and things like that, he knows what what to expect and little things to see uh, that'll that'll help pre snap wise and all that. So I've been able to learn a lot from him in that area. And as far as now looking ahead and preparing for an opponent, preparing for the Browns. You know, it's obviously a, a great opportunity this week. Um, the approach and preparation really doesn't change. Uh, I think as a backup, you prepare the same uh, as a starter does, and you're ready to go in at a moment's notice. So uh, as far as preparation and all that, nothing, nothing's going to change there. Okay, so uh, we'll hear more from uh, the new guy. Mark was on FS1 yesterday, and the discussion of John Elway came up. What was said? How'd that go? The Broncos were quiet at the trade deadline. Did they do the right thing, or did they mis- make a mistake in not trying to unload some veterans that may or may not be here next year? Uh, what about uh, compensatory Chris, as I'm now calling Chris Harris? Compensatory. Compensatory Chris. Uh, will there's still a chance to work out a, a long-term deal with him, a contract extension? Or will they have to wait a couple of drafts to be able to uh, reap the benefits of Chris Harris Jr.'s value the nuggets lose last night at home and a a bitter twist of irony how many wins have the nuggets picked off over the years with a team that played the night before on the west coast traveled to denver got in real early in the morning late at night and the bronc uh, the nuggets sitting at home were able to take advantage and uh and get an easy win well that kind of happened to them as they played in Sacramento the other night flew home, and meanwhile, Dallas was here waiting, and the Mavericks knocked off the Nuggets last night at Pepsi Center, uh, first loss of the season for the Nuggets. And by the way, for all of us who are wondering, when are we going to see Drew Locke, uh, Nugget fans are asking the same question, when are we going to see Michael Porter Jr.? All right, we'll get to uh, all of that and more. We're heading to a Game 7 in the World Series. Schlereth and Evans coming your way next.
Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? <laughs> Pump day? Uh, I don't know if surprise is the right word. Um, you know, I've obviously worked for it. Um, it, it has taken a while. Um, but, you know, you, you never want to see a starter go down. So, um, you know, we're, we're feeling for Joe right now. But, you know, this is, this is the opportunity you work for in, in those four years. There he is, the mystery man, the man of the hour. The sacrificial lamb, however you want to describe Brandon Allen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Mark Schlereth. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you, Michael? Well, good. It wasn't too, too bad last night. Uh, Did not get, I think, nearly as much snow as was originally uh, talked about. But the roads Uh are still snow-packed. They're still icy and and slick in some spots. And so um, definitely notice it this morning. Uh, A lot less cars out there and some delays in the school system so uh yeah uh, we got i know my kids have the the two hour delay which i always thought was very underrated because really? yeah because you know everybody loves a full snow day but you know if you get too many snow days then they get added on to the end of the year and it delays your summer vacation but a two hour delay you get a chance to go back to sleep and you still go into school, but it doesn't really feel like a regular school day, and yet it still counts as a regular school day. And so it's almost like having a substitute teacher, huh? Yeah, yeah. The two-hour exactly. snow, the, the two snow delay is like having a, a substitute come in. You know you're not really going to do all the work that you would normally do, and you're going to ask a lot of questions that you normally wouldn't ask because your teacher would be like, hey, no, they put the kibosh to that. I get it. I yeah. get, what about for you as a parent, though, the two-hour delay? The buses still run? Oh, yeah, no. Everything's just delayed a couple hours. That's all. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. It's all That's good. Not too bad. It's all good. So, you That's know, not I, bad. I sent my son a text. I said, go back to bed. You got a two hour delay. I would I would love to wake up to something like that, you know? Yeah. Okay, roll over, you know, back to sleep. And the kids don't even start. They, their brains don't even turn on. They can go right back to right sleep. Right back Without to even sleep. thinking we'll about it. We'll be back to sleep in two minutes. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's fantastic. All right. So, there he is, Brandon Allen. You're, uh, your interest level? Would you call it interest level when it comes to him playing on Sunday? Are you are you, are you fascinated, curious, hopeful, excited? I mean, how would you how would you describe the idea of seeing Brandon Allen play? Um, curious. You know, curious. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm curious to see, you know, what this what this offense looks like. I, I guess I, I guess there's uh curious like as you drive by a little bit of a car accident you know <laughs> like they that kind of curious yeah like i mean every one of us gets our um, um, not every one of us some of us get ample opportunity time and time and time again and time and time and time again and time and time and time again and can't play um we do not speak his name but most of us let me just say that most of us get an opportunity when somebody gets hurt that's how the game you know that's how it works for most of us and um and then it's what you do with that opportunity. So this is a tremendous opportunity for Brandon Allen to, to make this offense sing, to make this offense go, um, you know, to use some athleticism that maybe we haven't had at the quarterback position. So th- that part is that part is intriguing, Mike. That part's worth rubbernecking a little bit. Yeah, and, and one thing that we've gotten accustomed to around here is the idea of falling in love and holding out hope for the long shot quarterback. I mean, think about it. We've had we've had Trevor Simeon. Uh huh. Getting his cleats on the grass. Sure. We've had uh, Kyle Sloter. Mm-hmm. We've had ball security is job security. No, 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 no. Because Brock. Well, yeah, I guess Brock came back. Yeah. So once Brock came back, you know, he had sort of fallen back into that new category of of long shot hope. Yes. Uh, Chad Kelly. Uh, right. Um, you know, you so... better hope Swag doesn't get in because right. he's never letting go of that opportunity. <laughs> yeah, I remember that one. Don't right. let. Don't let swag get an opportunity. Don't let swag in there, man. Right. Don't let swag in there because he'll never look back. <laughs> and now we got Brandon Allen. Yeah. I mean, we right. are like the patron saint of NFL lost causes at quarterback. We really are. Lost <laughs> causes. Lost causes probably. I shouldn't fair. say lost causes. Uh, like, long yeah. shots. How about that? We're the patron long- saint of long shot NFL quarterbacks. Right. There you go. All right, ladies and gentlemen. As you're driving by the Broncos game, don't be afraid to rubberneck. <laughs> you're flicking ch- this gives a whole new a whole new meaning to rubbernecking. Yeah, uh-huh. As you're flicking through channels, you know, take a peek. Take a peek. You might like what you see.
Yeah. At least you they'll at least there'll be some enthusiasm there. And you know, he'll run around a little bit. He'll he'll probably, you know, gain a first down or two with his legs and that'll get people excited. You know. Right. And hey, look, I mean, this season's not going anywhere. And while we wait, hopefully, to get a look at uh, Drew Locke at some point. Uh, you know, hey, let's see what this guy has. Hey, stranger things have happened. Need I remind everybody, mm-hmm. Brandon Allen was a sixth-round draft choice. You know who else was a sixth-round draft choice? That, that's our, yes, I do. Yes. I know a lot of people who are sixth-round draft choices. But I love Tom Brady. That guy. Yeah. And so was Terrell Davis. So Gardner Minshew. And Gar- was Minshew a sixth rounder? I believe so. Or a fifth round. Was was Minshew Absolutely. Minshew's a sixth rounder? Okay. There you go. Look at what uh Minshew Mania. We could yeah. have uh Allen Hysteria. I don't know. I mean it's uh it's possible. So good luck. Hey, I, I I wish the the kid uh you know, all, all the success. I mean it it would be it would be awesome and you know, he's gained an opportunity. Let's see what he, what he does and get against the Cleveland team that's not going anywhere Everybody's either. Everybody's going to throw us in the trash. Yeah, I mean, uh, Brandon Allen against Baker Mayfield. Right. There you go, Brandon Allen. Take down the take down the cocky Baker Mayfield for your, your first NFL win. That'd be, that'd be nice. What if, if he outplays? Oh, my gosh. Can you imagine if he outplays? Oh, oh Baker, yeah. What would happen? What would go on with D-Man? Oh, my goodness. That would be a crushing blow for the Hall of Fame Five. It would be a crushing blow for the Hall Ooh. of Fame Five. You lose to Brandon Allen. Then you could just throw Brandon Allen right into the. Uh, what, what's your new five? Your take your pick five? No, your uh, fill in the blank five. Fill in the blank five. <laughs> you know what? If he's really good, we if he if he has a great game, you know what? We'll just call him BA. BA. B.A. B.A. Hey, B.A. B.A. got it done today. A lot of famous B.A.s out there. Mm-hmm. You know? Bruce Arians. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, B.A. What was the guy on um, the A-team? B.A. Yes. Baracus. B.A. Baracus. <laughs> you got B.A. Bruce Allen from Bruce the Allen. Redskins? That's right. Yeah. A lot of B.A.s out there. Hey, hey sure. <laughs> hey, woman. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you get the point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> oh, yeah. Sometimes Millennial Ben just catches me off guard, and I just uh, – <laughs> that, that was good. All right, we are off and rolling here on a uh, Wednesday. Take your time as you uh, get around where you need to go. We'll get you where you need to go. Uh, no deals done at the trade deadline. Did the Broncos do the right thing? That's next. All right, let's say good morning to Brent Iverson from Ideal Home Loans. Folks to turn to for all your mortgage needs. Hey, Brent, I know that the rates are really low right now. It's great news. How does that help people that are trying to buy maybe their first home? Well, here's the great news. If you're out shopping for a home, thanks to low rates, you qualify for more home for the same payment. 30-year fixed rates right now, 3.625% with an APR of 3.791%. If you looked around six months ago, you qualify for as much as $60,000 more in home today thanks to low rates. Brent, does this also help out current homeowners? Well, it does. You know, if you looked at refinancing six months ago, you're going to save over $200 a month more today on a $300,000 loan than you would have if you'd taken advantage of rates six months ago but again these low rates are not going to last forever you've got to take advantage of them call ideal home loans today to find out how much you can save or qualify for it 303-867-7000 that's 867-7000 or as always you can apply online idealhomeloans.com equal opportunity lender regulated by dora nmls 136756 for terms and conditions call 844-45-IDEAL
early <clears throat> stuff from our great 6 a.m. listeners. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. We got uh, 6 a.m. Rob. Hey, guys, we're here. Rock bottom. We made it. Now enjoy the view. Veterans that we're we'll back. never see again. And young guys will also never see again. Uh, uh, then you also have, we are the island of misfit quarterbacks. I want to oh be a dentist. <laughs> I want to be a real boy. <laughs> Island of misfit toys. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> oh my goodness! All right. Uh, nothing done at the trade deadline yesterday. That surprised you? Uh, well, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I think it's just. I think it's disappointing. I mean, that's that's the bottom line. It's it's just a disappointing situation um like because again now maybe maybe you work a long-term deal with chris harris jr and everything is like woohoo yay um this is this is awesome you know but again if you if you end up working a long-term deal doesn't it just feel like you just won you cost yourself three million dollars this year and doesn't it feel like you just wasted a year of like you would have had you done it a year earlier or a year previous have been proactive as opposed to letting it get to the point that it got to? Um, well, if they can still salvage this, I won't care about all that other stuff. I mean, you are right, but if in the end they can still hold on to Chris Harris, who is yeah, but still then, a very good player, then right. I, I, and I'd a year, be able to, a year, and then older, a year yeah. older, a year older, and then you do – you wouldn't do a three-year deal last year because of his age, because you didn't want to pay him, but this this year after a you know a crap season and after you know he he ages another year of playing, then it's the time. Again, it just points it just points to the organization. It points to what they're doing and the decisions that they're making. And and you know, I mean, it's just I mean, call it whatever you want to call it. It's it's it to me, it's just bad business. Well, it's bad business if you held on to a guy with a 2-6 and six record knowing that he's not going to be here next year and that you're going to have to settle for a compensatory pick. Compensatory Chris, as I now call him, mm-hmm. uh, because you'll, you'll get a, a, a compensatory pick for him, which would, would probably be similar to what you would have been able to get in a trade. I, I think that's their argument. Their argument is that, well, we weren't going to get much better value than what we would get for a compensatory pick, so we might as well just hold on to him right. and, and get and get his services for the rest of the year. The only problem is is that, yeah, you'll you'll get a compensatory pick for Chris Harris, but you won't be able to use it until the 2021 draft. Right. So that's the argument. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's I, the argument, and I, and I get, I get that you probably. Because I don't think, I don't think. He, I, all right, but if you're him, mm-hmm. I, I want you to put your player's cap on. If you're right. him, would you want to come back here and play here? No, I'd want to. I want a fresh start somewhere where I feel where I felt like we had a complete football team where I'd have a chance to compete. I mean, right now you look at their defensive numbers, Mike. They're. I, it, Pull up their defensive numbers. They're probably a uh, they're probably a top ten team in just about every category. I mean, Lafferty Music Man, can we get some? Thank you. In you total that? defense this year, total defense. They, total uh, that's, defense. That's based on yards. Fourth, fourth or fifth? Uh, no. Uh, yes. Hold on a second. Yeah. See, they do it. They do it inverted here. Okay. Yeah. They are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. Top ten. Right. All right. And then in points allowed. Oh, you're making me do this uh quickly on the fly. Uh, the the only the, the teams that have allowed less points per game than the Broncos. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they're eighth. So yeah, they're they're eighth in total so defense and eighth in points out. They are a top ten defense. They're a top ten, which defense. is what we expected from them at the beginning of the season. I thought they would have to be top five in order for them to to truly have a chance to make the playoffs. 
Right, but you but, didn't re- but you couldn't – there's nobody that could have predicted this offense would no, be this pathetic. No, if you had told me, hey, they'll right. be at, at the midway point of the season, they are eighth in total defense, eighth in points allowed, I'd say sign me up. Right. Yeah, so, I mean, that's what, that's what you thought, and you, you had no idea that the offense would be this pathetic. And, um, you know, I mean, the, the fact that it is, and there's – really, come on, there's no – I mean, there's no – light at the end of the tunnel as we're currently constructed, correct? I mean, if you're Chris Harris Jr., you're looking at this going, okay, what are they going to do? They, there are no more, like, there are no more unicorn quarterbacks out there to come in and fix everything, right? Like, who's going to, one, who's even going to come here? Let's say, for instance, that Tom Brady said, hey, man, I'm leaving. You think this is the place he choose to come? Of course uh, honestly, not. Of no, of course not. Now, uh, with the offense the way it's currently constructed, what quarterback wants to come in and play behind this offensive line? What quarterback wants to come in to, to play with one weapon in the passing game? One, Corlin Sutton. Like, come on, and and so Chris understands. I mean, he's been practicing against this for how many? How bad in the last couple of years at camp? Not, you know, the last few years at camp. How bad is he? Like, it's almost like, hey, defense, we got to take it easy and give the offense a break today and let them at least complete a couple of passes. Like he knows, he knows what he knows what's what. No, of course, of course. Like, if you're looking, hey, if you just want to retire a Bronco and and fade off into the sunset and get a couple of, you know, get a couple of years of big money, and but Chris Harris, like, he's competing, he's playing his ass off. Like, he's not just taking a paycheck for the sake of taking a paycheck to, you know, to to kind of ramble off into the sunset. He wants to be one of the highest paid corners in the NFL, but the fact that a team wasn't willing. If all the reports are true, what what wasn't willing to give the Broncos a, a, a number two pick, cert, certainly a first round pick, does that call into question what he would be able to command if he goes out there and becomes a free agent? If if he is thought around the NFL to be that he feels somebody out there will give me a, a contract that makes me one of the top five highest paid corners in the NFL, wouldn't a team be willing to give up that kind of draft pick, you think? No, not – well, listen, had they – I believe had they traded him this summer when he was holding out, his value would be much higher. Right now at the trade deadline, you're dealing with desperation. You're dealing with teams that are desperate, and they don't want to They don't want to mortgage their future on a – especially a guy who's who's on a one-year deal. And then you have to like you want to rent him, mm-hmm. give him a second rounder right. for eight games, right. and then have him say, "No, nah, I'm hitting free agency because it's in my contract." Like that, I, you can't, you can't uh, um, franchise tag me because you're you're taking on that contract, Mike. Better off to so, just say, "Hey, I, we we like him a lot, but let, we'll take right. our chance to gain him for just a free agent." Yeah, there. I, I mean, there's so. Um, I, I just think there's a lot of things that, like, it, had you traded for him at the beginning of the season, then he's worth a second rounder because then you say, okay, uh, contingent upon, we have to rework your deal. All right, let's rework my deal. Right now, no, you're not reworking a deal with eight games left when you can hit free agency and become, you know, one of the top, let's call it the top ten paid cornerbacks. I mean, I, I told you, meeting with Matt Nagy of the Chicago Bears called him the best slot corner in football bar none. And End nothing has happened since that game to change. He just shut down T.Y. Hilton. Everybody he's played against, he, he shut down. down. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, one more on the Ramoslot.com text line from Tim. This is proof you don't tick off John Elway. He just might make you stay here. The ultimate hose job by the boss man. All right, coming up next, it is the uh, morning brew. Uh, just what does Brandon Allen have in store for his first NFL appearance? And... The Nuggets done in by a bitter, bitter twist of cruel irony. We'll explain next. Once this uh, weather improves and we get back to some uh, lovely Colorado fall weather, if you are thinking that this will be a good time to sell your home, you want to make sure you have experience, knowledge, history, and integrity all on your side. You get all of that in one person. Those are all the qualities that Bill Watson of the Watson Group at Your Home Sold Guaranteed Realty 
possesses. The Watson Group at Your Home Sold Guaranteed Realty, where their name is their promise. Bill Watson has over 30 years of local real estate experience, the kind of experience that has allowed Bill to build different systems and platforms that are in place and ready to go the instant you put your house up on the market. He'll better market your home and get you top dollar. The results, they speak for themselves. Bill Watson nets his home sellers more money and sells his homes 23% faster than the average agent and is top ranked in Denver, according to the MLS. Got to know Bill and his sons, Lance and Evan. This is a tight-knit family. They work exceptionally well together. They know you have plenty of options out there when it comes to selling your house. All they want is a chance to meet with you and lend you Bill's thoughts, his recommendations, and years of experience. So call Bill Watson. The Watson Group at Your Home Sold Guaranteed Realty, where their name is their promise. 720-463-0002, 720-463-0002, or online at BillHasTheBuyers.com. Hey guys, Mark Slurth here from friends at Park Meadows Imaging. Guys, you dealing with an injury, maybe it's a knee, an ankle, a hip, a back, an elbow, whatever the case may be, you've rehabbed that thing, you've seen your doctor multiple times, and it just doesn't seem to be getting any better, so your doctor says, we need to get a picture of that, we need to get an MRI. So you go to schedule that MRI, and guess what, you're out two, three weeks, it means you're going to be limping around for another couple of weeks before you even find out what's going on. Not at Park Meadows Imaging, guys. Same day appointments for MRI, CT scans, and x ray state of the art medical imaging featuring the new Siemens MRI and CT scanners. And what that means for you, stronger magnetic fields means you're going to spend less time getting that image taken. And once you have that image, it's going to be clear, it's going to be great, and it's going to create a better diagnosis from your doctor, guys. That's how they work at Park Meadows Imaging, newly remodeled st- uh, uh, facility. They're wonderful over there. Com- Uh, super uh, experienced and friendly and they're compassionate they understand what you're going through they understand what it's like to be in pain guys most insurance is accepted with on-site benefit counselors right there to walk you through all your options and your concerns that's park meadows imaging give them a call 303-925-0674 that's 303-925-0674 or find them online at parkmeadowsimaging.com
It's time for your morning brew. Things are gonna get weird. You're gonna eat lightning and you're gonna crack thunder. Okay, this guy needs coffee and cruelers. Stack. You know what can really help you sort through these important issues? What? Orange mocha frappuccino! <laughs> Damn, Jimmy. This some serious going maze. Let's get it on! Yeah, very comfortable. Um, it's very similar offense to what I came from. Uh, so even when I first got here, I was already uh, pretty comfortable. And then terminology, I've, I've learned uh, a lot of that as I've, as I've been here. So uh, I feel very, very confident with the offense. All right, there he is, Brandon Allen. Just like Tom Brady, a six-round draft choice. Yep. Yes. I'm, I'm just going to go with that. Okay? Mm-hmm. He's I like it. He's going to be just like Tom Brady. And it starts. Year, 20 years from now. 20 years from now, what are the odds that we look back on this start as when it all began? When it all began. It all started. Just like Tom Brady. Uh, Drew Bledsoe gets hit in the chest by right. Mo Lewis. Right. Upper body injury. Right. Then all of a sudden, Tom Brady comes in. The rest is history. Joe Flacco, upper body injury. The neck thing going on. Boom. Brandon Allen comes in, sixth rounder. Leads us to the promised land for the next two decades. By the way, real quick, uh, Sandy yeah. in Orlando, and especially Sandy, about Chicka Bow Wow, was uh, advancing the idea that uh, this, this is a little, something's afoot here. The fact that Flacco going for a second opinion suggests the possibility he put on his tinfoil cap that the Broncos are somehow punishing him for speaking out against the uh, organization. For speaking out against the uh, play calling, yeah, yeah, that was uh, that I, you know, I, I had a couple of widely, um, you know, speculated, uh, just on television yesterday, and then on. Oh, uh, we're gonna get to of, you and your television a, a, a couple on. of radio shows. Well, you know, I mean, f- truth is very painful sometimes. Very, but, painful. but you don't think it's you don't think no no no, I don't think so. I All don't right. think there's any. I don't think there's any tinfoil cap conspiracy going on. Darn it. Next on the Morning Bro. On the players that, that were leaked out today, those weren't players that we were shopping. You know, where I'm from and what I was taught is when a team calls you, you should always listen to what they have to say. So that's what we did. That's Jets GM Joe Douglas. Uh, apparently, uh, Jamal Adams of the Jets was uh, upset that the GM went behind my back and actually floated my name out there in uh, rumors. Trade rumors. Right. I mean, come on. You know, I learned long ago, if Wayne Gretzky can be traded, anybody can be traded. Right. Okay? So, if your name's out there, deal with it. Everybody's name gets mentioned probably at one right. point or another. Doesn't mean he went out and actively shopped you, but of course he's going to look. Have you, have you looked at your team lately? Yeah. You guys stink. Uh, you know, so... If you can get one of those lion's share hauls, like, uh, you know, you're a young player that's under contract for a while. If you can get a, like, if you got a first and a third or two firsts or whatever, you know, whatever the asking price was, I mean, they'd be foolish not to do that. So, yeah, I mean, it, let's not act like you're untradeable. Everybody's well, tradable. By the way, what did your boy Talib do to get himself shipped out to NFL Siberia by the Rams? Yeah. Wow, he got sent to the Dolphins. Now, granted, he's on IR. He's not eligible to come back until, like, week 15. But still. Right. The Dolphins. Why? Yeah. Why? <laughs> that, may be, that may be a career. <laughs> that, that might be. may be like, uh, yeah, I don't yeah. want to necessarily be here. Made a lot of money. And um, good luck to you guys. I hope it works out. Next on the Morning Brew. Throw it ahead for Hardaway. He makes the catch, and he'll dribble out the clock. And the Mavericks have walked into Denver and have come from behind to defeat the Denver Nuggets tonight, 109-106. to Mavericks Radio, the Nuggets done in by a bitter twist of irony. How many times over the years did they reap the benefits of a team coming from the West Coast to Denver, getting in Early in the morning, having to play back-to-back, and the Nuggets staying at home, rested, ready to go, and they pick up an easy win. Well, uh, the tables are turned as the Nuggets played in Sacramento the night before, traveled, got back early, and the Mavericks were here waiting, and it was the Mavericks that had the fresher legs in the fourth quarter to get the win. Ah, irony. 
Yeah, it. Uh, but you know, I mean, that's that happens all the time, right? There's always those nights where you come in and uh, and teams aren't ready to play, and and so anyhow, I mean, that's that's going to happen occasionally. Yeah. But I, you know, I am I am very interested in in I, I may be jumping the shark here, but when are some of our young players that are going to be the future and uh, and and are going to lead the way? The Michael Porter Jr. Well, when do they? Yeah, what's going on? All I heard from Nugget fanboys uh, throughout the summer was yeah. Michael Porter Jr. looks amazing. This guy is going to be the missing piece. There was no need for them to go out and make a big move during the offseason because this guy is going to put them over the top. Oh, yeah. So far, he has not played yet in the NBA. Michael Malone is just putting him on ice. Drew Locke is sitting back going, wow, he's getting a raw deal. Yeah, exactly. When are they going to let that guy play? Meanwhile... The Nuggets are 20th in the NBA in scoring, 25th in field goal percentage, and middle of the pack in three-pointers made per game, and yet a guy who is supposed to be instant offense right, doesn't even get a chance to play. Hmm, you might want to text your buddy uh, Michael Malone and ask him about that. Yeah, what's going on, Michael? Let's see what, what his are answer we is. See, what do we see Porter Jr.? Yeah, come on What's now. going on? Next on The Morning Bro. Swing a high fly ball left field, sending Brantley back onto the warning track at the wall, looking up, and it is gone! Anthony Rendon puts it into the Crawford boxes, and the Nationals lead the ball game 5-2 to two here in the seventh inning. It's Anthony Rendon's first World Series home run and his second long ball of the postseason. Nationals Radio, we are going to a Game 7 in the World Series after a pretty uh, controversial game, which included a uh, moment in the seventh inning when Trey Turner was called out for uh, running inside the baseline, led to a long, long delay where the play was finally upheld, and then Dave Martinez, the Nationals manager, became the first manager since Bobby Cox in 1996 to get uh, thrown out of a World Series game. But the very next batter was Rendon, who had a two-run homer. So maybe uh, baseball karma coming around there. But a series that has been won exclusively by the road teams going to a Game 7, who do you like? Oh, I think, and I think from the neck injury, Scherzer threw the other day without yeah. neck spasms. I think I'm going with the Bulldog. Max Scherzer is a Bulldog I, I'm going to go with the, with the with the Nationals. Scherzer against Granky. I don't trust Granky. I don't either. I'm going with Scherzer. Gosh, I hope they win. That's this is exciting, exciting. Game seven coming up tonight. That'll do it for the morning brew. Bring that to you each and every morning at six thirty. Mark was on FS1 yesterday, and the subject of John Elway came Uh-oh. up. Uh-oh. What was said, and how did his uh, co-hosts react? You'll hear that next. Hey guys, Mark Schlereth here from our friends at Monster Bank. It's time to give them a call. Get your ducks in a row. 303 277 Guys, it's cold. The snow's obviously flying right now, and that means your furnace is kicking on, trying to keep your house nice and warm. And I'm telling you what else is kicking around right now. Yeah, furnace comes on. 
and all that uh, dust and that pollen and that nastiness, those allergens are starting to float around your house because they're all trapped in your air duct system. That's right. Uh, and cleaning out that air duct system drastically improves your system's ability to heat your home. Your furnace, as it's kicking on, guys, it is it is getting all those allergens and all that dust around. You need to get that stuff out of your air ducts. That's where my friends at MonsterVac come in. 303-277-0140. They are unbelievable, guys. They are, I mean, they come out with their custom-made trucks. Um, they suck all that filth, that dirt, that grime out. They also scrub out those air ducts with their specially made tools they scrub out your furnace they scrub out all the coils to make sure it's working at peak efficiency and not only is your air going to be cleaner that you're going to breathe in your home but also they're going to save you money on energy bills because your system is going to breathe easy it's going to work easy and more efficiently i'm telling you what over 700 five-star google reviews check them out online that's monster bag guys 303 303- 277-0140. Find them online at monstervac.com. So, Mark has about uh, 19 jobs. Yes, I do. You know, got to keep uh, your lovely wife custom to the lifestyle she's used to. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that's funny? <laughs> no. Like, watch out. She may this be listening. Is a wreck. You, may, <laughs> no. you, may, get a, you no. may get a text. No, no. I know, actually. You just love to work. That's the thing. It's, 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 no. It all comes from poolside, man. It just... You yeah. love to work. You got to be doing something. So that's why you got about 18 jobs. Of course, one of them is uh outstanding studio analyst for Fox Sports 1. 
And you were on yesterday. What show was it? That was uh, Speak for Yourself, the most fearless show in sports. <laughs> okay. And you were on with whom? Uh, Jason Whitlock, Marcellus Wiley, and uh, I think uh, uh, James Harrison was on. Okay, yeah. Jason Whitlock, certainly no shrinking violet he. I mean, he's uh, no. very opinionated and takes a lot to shock him. So, right. you guys were talking, and the subject to John Elway came up. Uh-huh. And you were asked what? I was asked, do you trust him to fix it? And your answer to was? The... My answer was no. <laughs> I don't. So I, you know, care to give us a little synopsis of what you said? Yeah, how well, was received I mean, by your panel mates? I, I think my panel mates were a bit shocked. Um, but listen, man, I'm not. I don't get. I don't get paid to to blow sunshine. And one thing about us, our show, me, is I I tell you what my opinion is. I I tell you what I feel. What you know, my honest opinion. And you know, the bottom line for me was. This has been a wreck. It's been a mess. They don't have enough talent to compete. And as long as you're not willing to admit that, I, 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 I can't sit here and say because we were teammates and because, you know, we are, maybe we're not friends, but we're, we're friends. Um, uh, again, you know, I know, like, I look at, I look at the situation you know, I, I have to be honest. I mean, I have to – I that's what I've done for 19 years doing this. And I'm like, if you're not willing to admit that you were in a complete and total rebuild, um, then, you know, then how can I sit there and say, oh, yeah, we can fix it if we don't have if, – if we aren't assessing our football team in an honest manner? You know, um. I talked about how the offensive line, and I and I quote, hasn't been where the score to yearn in five years, and yet you think you're going to find you know the unicorn quarterback to come in here and fix the offense. The defense has been good, but you know I mean, and I and I talked about seventy two. Um, like when when your organization continues to shuttle a guy out who can't play, and everybody knows he can't play. I mean, and and it's everybody. I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about fans. I'm not talking about other people in the league. You know, I'm talking about your own team. Like, they know. And they know that's coming from on high. Like, where is where is your credibility when you continue to do that, Mike? I mean, it, that to me, it's shot. As an organization, you have – you don't have a lot of credibility because of – just because of that move in – by itself, it's a standalone move, and you continue to shuttle that. I don't care if Rogers or whoever else gets the start and is awful. At least there may be an opportunity for that player to get better. The player we have that you keep shuttling out, and there's the only explanation. There, there's only one cogent, logical explanation. I drafted him in the first round, and I don't want to admit that I had another first-round bust like Paxton Lynch. What was the – now, I'm sure the guys with you were a little bit shocked because of the – Sure. You know, I mean, you're talking about your old team. You're talking about your, your old mm-hmm. teammate, guy you won Super Bowls yeah. with. So, but did they – did they necessarily disagree with your your take? I mean, you as you go around and you do these studio shows, I don't know how much the, the Broncos come up in these national uh, football conversations, you know, because of where they're, they're at right now. But when the subject comes up, what, what has been the overall impression of the Broncos under LA? Not coming from you, but, you know, coming from the people you, you work with, you, you listen to, right. you talk to, I mean, just, we know how you feel. Right. What's, what's the, what's the outside of Denver perspective? Well, I, I think the outside of Denver here recently has just been, you know, really, really bad free agent decisions and really bad uh, draft decisions. Um, now, you know, like I got pushed back yesterday on the set because Jason Whitlock is a huge Elway fan. That's his favorite player ever. And um, and and it's one of Marcellus's favorite players ever. So, you know, they want to point back to, well, they won a Super Bowl a few years ago with Peyton Manning. They got Peyton Manning. And, you know, to which my response is, yeah, they, they found a unicorn who covered a lot of sins. And um, 
And bottom line, a lot of great free agents came to Denver. Did they come to Denver? And partly, of course, you got to give John Elway credit. We'll give John Elway all the credit in the world. I mean, there was about seven teams that wanted to sign Peyton Manning. We got him. That give, the credit goes to John on that, 100%. But a lot of the free agents that came here didn't come here because John Elway was the GM. They came here to play with Peyton Manning because they knew that gave them a chance to win a championship. Uh, am I wrong in that? Of course not. No. Of course not. And so, and so I, But I said during that time, during that time period, look at the drafts. One after the other after. I mean, there's what? What do we figure out? From 13 to 17, there's like four guys on our team from the draft. Not a, nary a pro bowler anywhere. I mean, like that's 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 what we're dealing with right now, and that's why this roster is depleted. So, I mean, you know, again, I'm I'm spitting out facts. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to make enemies, and I'm not you know, but I'm not I'm certainly I'm not going to lie. That's that's where I stand. So, do I trust? I mean. His competitive nature is such that he won't admit that they don't that they don't have enough good players. How are you going to fix a problem if you won't admit that there is a problem? That, that's what I would ask you. Then would ask them as an organization. How are you going to fix a problem if you can't admit that you have a problem? How are you going to fix your left tackle position if you can't admit that there is a problem there? And that is is the number when when I talked a couple of weeks ago about the, the the moves that had to be made immediately. I said you got to let go of Garrett Foles now because what you are trying to do here, you are trying to empower a whole new set of leaders, young leaders. You're trying to empower a new coach who's trying to establish a new culture. And you, and and I absolutely, 100% trust where you're hearing all this from. When you are hearing from multiple players, current multiple players, players who are telling you they can't stand the sight of Garrett Bowles in that locker room. I'm sorry. No matter what you are trying to do, it stops dead in its tracks if you've got that kind of feeling in that room. And until you address that, how can you move forward? How can you honestly move forward and fix this if you've got a number of players in that locker room who can't stand the idea that that guy is getting a chance to go out and play every single week, how? I have talked to. I, I'm asking everybody to, out there yeah. listening. I, I don't care what kind of level of sports you played at. If if you walk in every single day and you see a guy who you know should not be out there, and the kind of resentment that that creates, how are you ever going to build a winning culture? How are you ever going to trust when your coach says, hey, I need this out of you? Right. How are you going to go, yeah, all right. Okay, I'll sure. I'll yeah, run through that sure. wall for you, coach. Right. All right. Uh, did you walk out of that uh, time on television thinking, hmm, might get a I, phone call after that one? I, I, thought to, I thought to myself, well, I'm off the Christmas card list. <laughs> My wife texted me and goes, are we going to be having to move out of Denver? <laughs> She That's it, what huh? she wants to know. Yes. Right. This is a wreck. All right. Coming up next, what to expect from Brandon Allen? We'll hear from the man himself next. Hey guys, Mark Schlereth here for my friends at Wills Wellness and Estate Planning, reminding you they're not your traditional or your typical law firm. They focus on one thing and one thing only, estate planning, and everybody can benefit from basic estate planning, guys. Whether you're married, single, divorced, whether you have a family, you have kids, or you don't have kids, guys, everybody needs an estate plan. Wills Wellness and Estate Planning, they do it from locations in Denver, Park Hill, Stapleton, Highlands Ranch, Castle Rock, all conveniently located to serve you guys. And they pride themselves on exactly that, serving you. It's about relationship. 
They want to make sure that they're there for the long haul, guys. That's why they work on a flat fee basis, agreed to in advance, to make sure that you are taken care of. And they understand, hey, your needs are going to change. And they want to be there over time with you to help you in those changing needs. I tell you this all the time, guys. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. So make sure you take care of tomorrow today. Call them, 720-266-8190. That's 720-266-8190. Or find them online at willsandwellness.com. Uh, I don't know if surprise is the right word. Um, you know, I've obviously worked for it. Um, it, it has taken a while, uh, but, you know, you, you never want to see a starter go down. So, um, you know, we're, we're feeling for Joe right now, but, you know, this is, this is the opportunity you work for in those four years. There he is. There he is, Brandon Allen, set to make his uh, first NFL appearance, put up his first NFL stats, and get the start for the Broncos on Sunday more from Allen, wondering if he'd ever get this opportunity. You know, I don't think I questioned it. It was just like, I, like I said, it's just something I've always worked for and and tried to be ready for. Um, and you know, it's the fact that I, I have a whole week to prepare is definitely helpful. Um, I think that's going to be beneficial for us. But um, 
you know, like I said, I just see something you just work for, and, and all those college games. You know, college is one thing, but um, you know, obviously, I've I've played I've played football. I've been in the preseason games for four years now, so um, you know, I, I I think it's be a great opportunity. Hey, I, I'm really looking forward to this, Mark. I, I I really am because I've got that feeling of been there, done that with Joe Flacco. I'm I'm ready to move on and and see something else and. You know, the odds are extremely long that, that Brandon Allen will, will work out. But, hey, in a league right now, this year, this year in which Kyle Allen, undrafted, mm-hmm. has come in and, and done wonderful things for the Carolina Panthers, and in a year in which Gardner Minshew, a fellow six-round pick, has come in and done wonderful things for the Jacksonville Jaguars, why not? Why not? And it's that, it's that kind of curiosity that at least makes this game a heck of a lot more interesting than I thought it would be a few days ago. Kind of a why not us, right? Yeah. You going to sing? Yeah, I was you thinking want about it. You but want I, to. I do, but you I'm not going to say. I know. Why you want to. Us? <laughs> Some people are made. All right. So, yeah, I mean, it, listen. Anything's better than what we've been watching the last several weeks. And if, um, you know, if, if Brandon Allen has an ability to escape pressure and uh, and make a few plays with his feet, you know, something that we haven't had as an offense um, to extend the, uh, the the play action boot keep game and to do something, give, give you an option on the edge where you can tuck it and run a little bit, like that could be a good thing. It'll open up a little bit of the um, – RPO game, you know, something that we never really had with Joe Flacco because Joe Flacco doesn't scare anybody on the edge. So, yeah, I mean, I could see that throwing a wrinkle into Wrinkle's offense. There's a, a wrinkle into the wrinkle offense. So, yeah, I mean, that's I'm, I'm excited about that, Mike. I'm excited about to see what exactly this offense looks like with him. So, good. We'll, we'll see exactly what goes on now. Do I have a lot of, am I holding out hope or am I holding out faith or do I think it fixes and do I think all of a sudden we become a playoff caliber team and, uh, you know, we go on a run here and win six straight games? No, absolutely not. But, you know. No, there's there's a there's a Grand canyon size difference between curiosity and real expectations. I'm right. expecting nothing. I'm expecting this to be, uh, okay, great, saw him. Now, now when I when, now when can I see Drew Locke? Okay, but uh, it, for the time being, I'm curious. I'm curious. I'm hopeful. And in in a season that is going rapidly nowhere, it at least creates a little bit of intrigue, a little bit of curiosity, a little bit of a reason to tune in. Right. And, and you know, and and with the understanding that it's not like it's a complete no hoper. Uh, there there are plenty of examples out there. Hey, folks, the winningest Bronco quarterback since you-know-who left here is Trevor Simeon, a seventh-round draft choice. Wow. Man, they should have paid him that money, huh, Mark? Tell you what, he's better Hey, better to be paying him right now than Flacco, <laughs> right? As far as everybody else is, as far as everybody here is concerned. <laughs> so... In, 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 we've, we've seen Even our- when I'm wrong, I'm right. This is the amazing thing about me, Mike. Oh, boy. Here we go. Even when hey, I'm wrong, I'm right. You know we haven't played in a while, Ben? Mark talking about himself music. Yeah. You know? The greatness of Mark talking about Mark. Oh, right? Where'd he go? The Huff? He left the, the – Ben's not in the chair. Where'd he ben, go? I think he's in the restroom. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Oof. Oh, well, we can't have the greatness of Mark talking about Mark. Nope. But the good point is, even when I'm wrong, I'm right. <laughs> Which is how? Well, I mean, you know, I mean, you just said it. Who's got more wins than any other quarterback since you know who retired? That doesn't mean, that they, on the grass. Doesn't mean that they should have signed him for 10 years and $12 million a year like you were suggesting. Pay that man his money. Well, I didn't say 10 years. Well, you said, if I may quote, I believe we have found our quarterback for the next decade. It's better that they pay him now than wait. I think you, I think you, 
I think you wedged me into that, but well, I know you did. No, no I did But didn't. here's the deal. No, no, believe me. Yeah. I was as you, stunned. I was as stunned as no, everybody was you that wedged, morning. You badgered no, me I did into. Not badger you into that you one. badgered me into it like you do, like you did with no, with. If, if anything, Nick Ferguson, if, twelve and four. If anything, I gave you opportunities to get out of it. Because no. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, that's on, revision. I that's gave, revisionist I you, history. I gave you an opportunity to walk it back. No, that's revisionist history. And you history. did not. The man in the mom jeans is correct. No, Daniel he's Bender's not. There for there, you know. No, no. That's a, uh, yeah, that's a uh, revisionist history deal right there. I was wrong. I stand corrected. Yeah, <laughs> I was. But even when I'm wrong, I'm right. Well, considering the quarterbacks it, it, well, that we've, in that that we've case, run through yeah, here, in that case, you were right. All right, right. Simeon, get that Ben has been the best you, you, since you know who. Boom. Even when I'm wrong, I'm right. I don't know if that justifies a a ten year, sixty million dollar contract no, or it. It well. Ten years, sixty well, million. Yeah, right. well, yeah, that well, would actually, that justify been, that. Yeah, yeah, that would have just even if you're just a ten, backup for ten, the rest ten of years, your life. One hundred twenty million, maybe would have been. All right. Well, anyway. the the bottom the bottom line is is that you know one he was better than the guys you've had, and he just but he couldn't protect him. He took a just took a beating, man. That kid oh. took a beating. Gosh, Gosh. savage. It was just like he's a lot tougher than me because I'd have quit. I'd have tapped out long before he yeah. tapped out. I was yeah. like, "Yeah, I, um, that's." But yeah, I mean, just again, it just goes to show you how bad it how bad it's been. Boy, mm. which is which is why? Hey, come on! I mean, this is a fan base that has had to get excited over the years for Trevor Simeon. For Paxton Lynch, mm-hmm. for the, ball security is job security. For the return of Brock, for Swag Kelly, don't Keenum. There's the interception. Don't let Swag get a chance because he'll never give up this job. Kyle yes. Sloter, um, you know. So I mean, we we really are the the patron saint organization of long shot quarterbacks. I don't know right. what it is to be a franchise quarterback. We really oh. are. Oh, I forgot about him, too. Yeah, How did I forget about, about him? That. Right. Keenum, there's the interception. By the way, on the subject of offensive linemen, I'd like you to go back and look at the highlight of Dave Martinez, the manager of the Nationals, getting thrown out yesterday. Uh-huh. I would like you to watch the way he is bull rushing his assistant coach to try to get to those umpires. Right. And watch the way the assistant coach in true 72 style is trying to desperately hog tie him to the ground. Uh, just but, hold it back. I mean, go take a look at Dave Martinez and tell me he would not instantly become our second best offensive lineman. Oh my gosh. I mean, you always say it's all about moving a person what? against his will from point A to point B. You what take a, I... you take a look at what Dave Martinez did last night and tell me that guy could not be an outstanding offensive lineman for the Denver Broncos. I want he to know solve the, our right tackle issues. I want to know about the guy who tackled. I want to put a juxtaposition video of Garrett and that guy next to each other and see how, like, who's holding, who held them better. Oh, my goodness. If somebody could somehow sink Dave Martinez bull rushing Garrett Bowles, that would be, that would oh. break the internet. It'd break the internet. <laughs> it would be, it would be awesome. Yeah. All right, nice. compensatory Chris Harris is staying put. Is that a good thing? That's next. Hey guys, you live with back or neck pain. You've been told you need surgery and you just don't want to go through it. I don't blame you. You want a second opinion? See if there might be other options. Well, I have one for you. Call my friends at Spine One. 303-367-2225. They'll get you in today. Guys, their doctors take a comprehensive approach to spine care. And right now, if you have an old MRI, you've had something that you've been looked at before 
and uh, you've got that MRI, bring that in because their doctors will review those existing images at no cost to you and provide a treatment plan to get you pain-free, guys. 20 years I live with back pain to the point where it cut me, uh, I mean, it just cut me to the core, man. It just uh, essentially took me out of life in general, checked out of a bunch of stuff, working out, playing golf, doing all the things you love to do as a dude, right? And they got me back in, back in the gym, back to playing golf. A uh, few short visits, and, and I was pretty much pain-free, and I think they could do the same thing for you. Manage that pain, get you back, checked into life, checked into your family. All you have to do is pick up the phone and make that call. 303-367-2225. That's 303-367-BACK. Or find them online at SpineOne.com.
Four Down Territory coming up at 7.30. Don't forget Joel Klatt, his weekly visit, coming up uh, just after 8. So the Broncos stood pat at the trade deadline. By the way, the trade deadline overall around the league kind of came and went with a whimper. We got all the action uh, well before uh, the trade deadline. The actual trade deadline day was quiet. You surprised that the Broncos didn't do anything, especially with Chris Harris Jr.? Well, I mean, he, I guess yes and no, Mike. I mean, I thought you and I both talked about you need to move him, um, but you can't get value. If you can't get value, if there's a, a point where you're getting the same amount of value for in a compensatory pick as you would, um, but at, at least if you would have traded him, you'd have got value next draft as opposed to two drafts from now. So, um, you know, I I am surprised. I'm 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 somewhat surprised. Does it move does it encourage you to believe that the fact that they didn't trade him makes them think that they can re-sign him? I you know I put myself I put myself in in his shoes. There comes a time where you don't want to leave. You have your, you know, your whole, you, you have your life here, right? Your, your family and, and you've won a Super Bowl and you've done all those things here. But there comes a time in a player's career where I think you look at it like a change of senior is probably going to do me good. And this organization um, is probably not going anywhere. Not in the near future. And, you know, I'm at the end of my career and, and I need a place to go. Like, I would, if, if the Broncos come out and make him the highest paid corner in football, then that's one thing. Then, you know, you sign that deal and, and you know, you're a, a legacy guy or whatever. But I just don't believe they're going to do that. And therefore, I think, the best thing for him is probably to pack up and, and move on. You know, I always kind of – you always relate things to what's happened to you throughout your career. Like, sometimes the best thing that happened – the best thing that happened to me in my career was leaving Washington. Them telling me, hey, you can't play anymore. We don't want you anymore. You know, and, and, and understanding that there was a certain amount of dysfunction that was – that was I was in one of the most stable situations for, for six years. And the last year and a half of it was not good. And, you know, and injuries and other things were different for me than they are for Chris. But, like, I just needed – like, even when they came back to me and say, hey, we, we didn't mean we, we don't think you can play. We'd like to match whatever offer you get. And I was just like, yeah, I, I'm leaving. I don't, you don't, you know, don't waste your breath or my time because I just am not – I don't want to be here anymore. And, I you know, I, I mean – that to me would be kind of I would think where unless you come to him and say hey we're making you the highest paid corner in football which I don't see them doing Mike then I think a change of scenery is probably the best thing. But for is him. it all about the dollars, or do you get to a point in your career where, especially if you've won a Super Bowl, that that you look for other things a- along with the dollars, but maybe you're not ruled by the dollars as much as you would have been. When you were a younger player, I mean that's what I think. That's sure. what that's what I would like to believe. I think that's what a lot of fans out there would like to believe. That it's not about all just how much you're going to make, but okay, maybe the Broncos situation isn't that attractive, and maybe they are staring at a long rebuild. But if they show up and say, "Chris, we'll offer you the most money," does all of a sudden you look and go, "Well, hey, you know, I'm comfortable. My family's here. We know our." I mean, how much at this stage of your career is it about the dollars? Because it was about the dollars for him this off season, right? Well, I, I is mean, it still I, about the dollars, or is it about other stuff? Well, I think there is some other. Here's what I would say to you, Mike: If they come up and make him the highest paid corner in football and he accepts it, then it's about the dollars, right? Because the odds of you coming here and winning in the next three years, I mean, are you going to have a 49er turnaround where you went 4-12 and and now all of a sudden you're undefeated? 
without the key pieces in place and the key pieces being healthy? Like, really? So, like, to me, all things being equal, if he chooses to move and goes to a place that's that's competitive money-wise, but that has a chance to win, that would prove that it's not all about the dollars. You he's, know, he's making or, all right. He got the bump this year. Okay, he's got he got the bump. Uh huh. So he's making about twelve million this year. Okay. The highest paid cornerbacks in the NFL right now, the top ten, all range between uh, Janoris Jenkins at number ten at twelve and a half million, Xavier Howard of the Dolphins number one at fifteen point one. Right. He's already at twelve. I mean, what, what? How hard would it be to move him up into that, you know, thirteen, fourteen million range in which he, you know, instantly becomes one of the top, you know, five or six highest paid corners in the NFL? Well, remember, I mean, there's going to be a couple of guys um, that you know, or their deals are going to be up. Uh, and Ramsey will probably Jaylen get a Ramsey, new deal. Yep. He's going to be fifteen, sixteen million bucks a year. Um, uh, that number is, that mo- number is moving. I don't know what Stephon Gilmore's, uh, current situation contract wise looks like, but you know, he is considered the best corner in football, the best outside corner in football. He's at 13 million. And will he get, you know, wh- where is his deal? When is it up? Will he get a new deal? I mean, yeah. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that are going on there. Like if, if, you know, if, if he signs, if he signs, I just can't imagine him signing here for less than for less than top three or four corner money. And I just don't think the Broncos are going to be willing to pay that. Why not? Why not? Every week he gets locked up against the team's best receiver, and every week that guy's stats are below what he normally gets. I know Keenan Allen. Doth protest too much, but he, you know, it, it, it's fact. His numbers come in below what he normally gets. Um, uh, the, the cat from uh, Green Bay, Devontae um, uh, Adams. Devontae Adams, came mm-hmm. in below his average. T.Y. Hilton. T.Y. Hilton. Now, Hilton had the big catch. Well, a lot of that was, you know, just broken play type stuff, and it still took an amazing throw and an amazing catch. He came in well below his season, season averages. All this guy does, and, and and then you have what Matt Nagy, the head coach of the Bears, told you flat out: this guy is the best slot corner in football. And and do you see his play ready to fall off a cliff? I don't. No, not at all. Then because because he's never relied on athleticism to win him. He's always relied on just being really sound and really good and. So he, it's not like, hey, he loses elite level athleticism, and all of a sudden his game and drops for off. All, for goodness' sake, for a team that needs more Chris Harris Juniors, not less of them. Right. Why? I mean, come on. What what's going on over there? All right. Rhetorical question. I know. Four down territory. Next. Hey guys, Mark Slayer here from my uh, championship dealership. That's the great folks over at Chomp BMW guy. Their model year in sales event uh, still going on right now. You can grab a brand new 2019 BMW at an amazing price. And they're having it here in October because they're making room for that 2020 inventory that's about to arrive, guys. So head on over to ShompBMW.com to see all the details. And winter, boy, I tell you what, did it hit us hard, right? Snowy roads, icy, cold, nastiness. Well, it's not going to be a problem for me. I'm driving the brand new X5 with that X drive, all wheel drive technology. And I'm telling you what, what a great, I mean, what a, a great vehicle. And that technology is unbelievable. Up and down those snowy roads, not a problem at all. One price, one person, one hour. Promise pioneered to identify, respect, and exceed. 
the client's expectations, and that's exactly what I got 11 years ago when I purchased my first car from Shump BMW. Been a customer ever since, guys. Seamless transactions. There's never a surprise. It's car buying redefined. You can experience it only at Shump BMW. Simple, transparent, and personal. Guys, check them out right now. Lucent and C470 in Highlands Ranch, or find them online at uh, ShumpBMW.com, where it's always one price, one person, one hour. is four down territory. I'd like to start out with uh, a thank you to John Elway. That just <laughs> happened. All right, now I'll kill a snitch. I'm not saying I have. I'm not saying I have. How much you want to make a bet I can throw a football over the mountain? On Sports Radio 104.3, The Fan. Gentlemen, this is the real thing. This is what you've been trained for. First down. Yeah, very comfortable. Um, it's a very similar offense to where I came from. Uh, so even when I first got here, I was already uh, pretty comfortable. And then terminology, I've, I've learned... Uh, a lot of that as I've, as I've been here, so uh, I feel very, very confident with the offense. Brandon Allen, there he is, folks. The guy that lonely Bronco nation, Bron- excuse me, Broncos country, uh, will uh, turn their eyes to. Welcome to Bronco land. Sorry. Uh, on Sunday, uh, okay, we're, we're hoping for the best. Yes. Realistically, what, what will a Brandon Allen first start in the NFL look like? Um, 
I you know I think I think a lot you're of running see, around. Yeah, I think you're gonna see plays with his feet. Um, you know, some frenetic kind of uh, big time breakdown things that that end up being pretty good. And then I think you're gonna see you know you're gonna see your fair share of mistakes as well. I mean, I I can't imagine. I mean, I can't imagine you going out there and playing completely clean. Um, and you know, I mean, you say what you will about the Cleveland Browns because they're a train wreck as well. But uh, they're a talented train wreck now, Mike. They'll make some plays on the defensive side of the ball. But they so. can't be. But they can't be. I mean, there's got to be a certain unease this week in preparing for the for Brandon Allen, just because of the unknown and the fact that this is a guy who has literally nothing to lose. So he can just he can just take off and run. And you know, how does that impact the defense? You know, preparing to play a quarterback who's got nothing to lose and at the first sign of trouble is just going to take off. Yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously when you have, like, those broken plays, right, the the second chance plays, those things are exceptionally hard to defend. And, and you know, they, they always call in the league when you talk to defensive coordinators, they talk about guys who can take off and make uh, plays with their feet. They, get, they call them plaster plays, like, when things break down and you get those second chance plays, you got to plaster in coverage. You just got to cover, and you can't come off that coverage and tell the guy brace the line of scrimmage. And once he does, you know, and he can no longer throw it, then it, then it's time. But the problem is you start peaking. Like when is he breaking the line of scrimmage? When is he breaking the line of scrimmage? Next thing you know, guys, fifteen yards behind you. So, like those guys are harder to defend. And if he's got that athleticism and that ability. You know, it'll it'll add a wrinkle to the offense. I love this text. I bet you guys a million dollars the first play for the Broncos on Sunday is going to be a run up the middle. Next in four down territory. Second down. I'll always be a confident guy. You know, I'm ready whenever whenever they're ready, I'll be ready. And, um, you know, I don't know. You know, I've been in this league for, what is it? It's been eight weeks, nine weeks, whatever, uh, to where they know a lot more about this league than I do, and they know a lot more about timing and this whole process to where I trust them, like I said, but they'll get a confident guy whenever they, whenever they, you know, call the number up. Do you trust them, Drew Locke? Should you trust them, Drew Locke, when it comes to them doing what's best for you? I'm certainly starting to wonder, are you? Well, hey. You put 72 out there, it's not doing what's best for Drew Locke. I guarantee you. Well, maybe it is right now. Maybe not addressing you. Like, maybe it is that, hey, they want to keep you healthy and uh, and putting you and putting you out there right now is, as they're currently constructed is not the best way to do that. So maybe they are. Maybe maybe you do have a lot. Of, I have a lot of trust because they're not playing me. and uh, They really like me. Yeah, they, they really like me. they don't want me to get killed. Yes. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, how, how's that supposed to make Brandon Allen feel? Right. Well, Brandon, we don't like you nearly as much. You are disposable. Yes. Uh, we Let look at you, you like we look at running backs. You are cattle. Move them in, move them out. Move. Next in four down territory. Third down. down. End of the road. Nothing to do. And no hope of things getting better. <laughs> Sounds like Saturday night at my house. That's a keep to leave. Wow. Yep, that's to leave like we've never heard him. After he was shipped he, to the upset. Miami Dolphins. Yeah, he's upset. I don't think he's even upset. It's just it's just, you know, just the Miami, way it is, right? Where NFL hopes and dreams go to die. Yeah, that's for sure. Wow. What do you think that phone call was like? Was that McVeigh? That had to, you think that was McVay uh, or who would have been who would have been making that phone call to a Keith Lee who was recently put on IR less, is not is not eligible to come off IR until okay. week fifteen. But I think his thought was, "Hey, awesome! I come back week fifteen. You know, I get uh, reunited reunited with my guy Wade. You know, I jump back out there and I'm ready for the playoff run. I right. go back to another uh, Super Bowl." Instead, he's been shipped to Miami as the Dolphins, um, the the Rams trying to create some uh, salary cap room to be able to pay Jalen Ramsey. Uh, less need. It would make that call. He's uh, the GM. Uh, but here, here's the thing for Imagine Akeem. that call. Here's the thing for Akeem, though. You go to Miami, you spend a little time rehabbing. You're not playing, right? 
A little sunshine. True. It's like a little mini six-week vacation. And then you come off IR. Now, what are the odds are really, like, maybe that rehab takes a little bit longer. Maybe I just don't, listen, man, I'm just yeah. not quite 100 Kind of take a take a take a page out of Juwan James playbook playbook. Yeah, I'm just I'm not. Just mm, not snap. I'm like ninety percent, but I'm not a hundred yet. I don't feel quite right. Well, it's week seventeen. We're not going anywhere. So, all right, I'll just call it good. And then he's an unrestricted free agent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, why are the Dolphins doing it? Um. Because they're the Dolphins. No, because they're the, probably they, they get it. No, they get a better. Oh, they get a. They get an extra pick too. Yeah, they 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 probably just hey, we'll take him. We'll, we'll take, take him. We're yeah. not. We'll take his money and then we'll get an extra pick out of it. So yeah, there you go. Next in four down territory. Fourth down. I'm back. Trent Williams is back. Mm. The prodigal son returns. To the Washington Redskins. It does not look like he will be dealt. Nobody uh, gave the Redskins, what was it, two uh, first-round picks was the, the asking yeah, price so, there? something like that, yeah. I, you and I talked about this during the offseason, the idea that more and more players would be emboldened by what Antonio Brown did or what mm-hmm. Le'Veon Bell did. Hey, you know, hold out and we'll get what we want. But it really hasn't worked out that way, has it? Melvin Gordon came crawling back, lost a buttload of money. Trent Williams comes crawling back. Uh, this, this uh, you know, big swing in which, which the players would, uh, you know, get exactly what they wanted with these holdouts isn't exactly working out the way they thought, huh? Well, not every, not, not every guy. I mean, there's plenty of guys it's worked for. There's some guys it hasn't worked for. So, but. You know, I mean, Trent Williams. Ultimately, he's going to go back. He's going to get his. He's going to get one more year in, and then, and then, you know, we'll see exactly what happens with Trent Williams. But his his whole deal was, I don't think his whole deal was about the money, Mike. His whole deal was he didn't want to play in Washington anymore. He felt like they, uh, he felt like they did, you know, they did him dirty, um, and they uh, like it was an injury thing that they didn't. He didn't feel like they were doing him right by. So there was a. It's kind of like the. It's kind of like the Colecio Semele thing in the New York with the New York Jets. There was there was something else going on there that that he didn't like the the dealings, and so he was basically saying, "I don't trust this organization. I ain't playing for him." That'll do it for four down territory. Our tour around the NFL. Bring that to you each and every morning at seven thirty. Coming up next, our Denver Seven insider Troy Rank will join us. He spoke at length with Drew Locke. What is his sense? as to when we may see Drew Locke. That is coming up next. Hey, Siltar Motors, for 25 years, has been in the business of helping folks out who are dealing with a rough patch, dealing with bankruptcy. And the zero-down program that they have allows people to still be able to purchase that all-important car. Because even if you're going through bankruptcy, life still goes on. You still have to be able to run errands, get the kids around, get to work, build your life, put it back together. Your car is a big part of that. And Silterhar helps people with their zero down program, zero down and no payments for 45 days in almost all cases. Reach out to the zero down team made up of three outstanding guys in Brian, John and Ty. Three guys with a a combined 30 years of experience at Silterhar. And experience is a word that just keeps coming up when you're talking about Silterhar Motors. Family-run business for 60 years, 19 President Awards, which are the MVPs given out in the car industry. They're with you before you buy the car, during the car buying process, and well after. It's why their service makes such an impression upon people that one-third of their average monthly business is repeat customers. They keep coming back. Why? Because Siltahar Motors does it the right way and doing it the right way for folks dealing with bankruptcy. With their zero-down program, reach out. If you or someone you know is dealing with bankruptcy, you could be driving that new car from Siltahar the very next day. Zero down in almost all cases. Call the Zero Down team at 720-446-9222 or online at sthmotors.com.
Kit. All right, let's welcome in our Denver 7 Insider, presented by Tranny Law. It is the one and only Troy Rank. And Troy, uh, good morning. You had a chance to speak at length with uh, Drew Locke yesterday. Just uh, overall takeaways of, of, of where this kid is at right now. Well, he has an understanding of why this is going on the way it is. I know fans want him in there now. They want him to be the backup, and some want him to start. But as I talk to him, I mean, the reality is this. He really hasn't practiced since kind of mid-August. And so to put him into a game right now without practicing would be setting him up to fail. While, he, yeah, sure, you could do it, but it wouldn't be behoove him in terms of his development. So he understands that. After the bye week, the plan would be then to activate him, get a week of practice. My, loosely, it would be two weeks of practice. And then if everything goes as planned, you know, and I'm not rooting against Brandon Allen, but if everything would then kind of fall into place, he would be in position, in, theoretically, to start that home game against the Chargers on December 1st. That's not set in stone. That's just kind of mapping it out based on what he's saying, what they're kind of planning. So I know it frustrates fans. They want it to happen sooner than later, and they wanted him to be activated two weeks ago when he was medically cleared. The reason he wasn't is they felt like they were still in it. He wasn't going to play in those weeks. He wasn't going to play in front of Joe Flacco. So they were holding out hope to bring someone else, perhaps from IR, keeping all their options open. That complicated it. You know, if you had a clear plan that you're not trying to contend this year, you would have activated him two weeks ago. But the reality is this. He needs a little bit of practice time to get ready, even as a backup, because he's only been doing virtual reality stuff essentially for the last couple months. So essentially, they haven't had a clear plan because they've been they've been, uh, uh, you know, I mean, what I'm what I'm hearing from you is the plan is we we hope things work out and we think we can be good. And obviously now all of a sudden you've set yourself back by having unrealistic expectations. At least that's how I read into it. Um, anybody can put it, any, any spin they want onto it, but, you know, this team was not very good anyhow, and you, you didn't activate your, your quarterback of the potential future or one that you need to get a look at because you were living on this pipe dream that you thought you could compete. Is that is that pretty clear? Well, the, yeah, the plan was they were going to contend, and in contending, he wasn't in line to play. And he would have been the backup had he not gotten hurt. Remember, he won the backup job. So this idea that he's like getting beaten out by Brett Rippon, that's silly. He beat out Brett Rippon and Kevin Hogan, who then both had a chance to win it and were both cut. So it's not that Locke's necessarily competing against Rippon. He's not. He's competing against his own health that set him back. But you're right, Mark. Had you gone into the season and said, we are rebuilding, and if we have a chance to contend, hey, that's great. It was the opposite. We are contending and if it doesn't work out, then we look at the other side of it. And that's kind of where they are now is, okay, we're two and six. Now we need to figure out how to get this kid ready. Remember, in fairness to them, he was hurt. It wasn't like they shelved him for no reason. He did hurt his thumb. So, yeah, it, again, this goes back to kind of who are you going into a season. And because they refuse to use the word rebuild, you get caught where you're, you know, you're half pregnant. You're contending, but you're not. You're in it, but you're not. And it's this week-to-week proposition, and it influences roster decisions. So you respect the fact they want to win and contend, but you also have to be realistic with what your roster is telling you. Busy with Troy Rank. Why no trades yesterday? Well, Harris was the one guy that was out there, and they were off, They were wanting a, a two or a really good three, and they never got it. Philly and Houston were the most interested. Houston came off the board when they got Conley from the Raiders last week. Philly remained interested, and they won against Buffalo. So that thought, hey, maybe they are going to pay an extra price because the secondary has been one of their issues, as Orlando Skandrick talked about uh, last week in the media, you know, ripping Malcolm Jenkins. Would they add another part like Chris Harris? Ultimately, they didn't get an offer for him they felt was better than a compensatory pick, a third, likely third rounder they'll get in 2021. So they held on to him. The other thing with Harris – while I I don't know how realistic this is based on how last offseason went, by keeping him in-house, it does keep you open to now negotiating an extension for him. They weren't close on the money last winter, and it it ultimately ended up with a $3 million raise this year, but no traction on a multi-year contract. But by keeping him in-house, you have an opportunity to then possibly circle back. And they had, you know, when I talked to sources yesterday, that hasn't been ruled out. He's been a great fit in the Fangio defense, but you know, money talks in these situations. But that the other trade, they didn't really have anyone. Mike 
Derek Wolf is an expiring contract. Adam Gossis is not playing. I mean, there were just not any deals out there to just give away someone that they would, you know, like in Wolf and Harris's case, they were more comfortable just sitting based on the offers they got because they'll get compensatory picks. What what what's your uh, what's your just kind of your gut tell you about the odds of Chris Harris Jr. remaining a Bronco and signing a long term deal next off season if he couldn't get one last off season? Yeah, I mean, I'll be optimistic and say it's forty percent he could stay. I mean, it depends on the market. What hurts Chris is his age. You know, he's going to be thirty one in the off season, and how what will how that. How will that reflect the offers he receives? If you just watch the on-field play, he's for me is a top ten corner. It depends on you know the defense. I get all that scheme. Where does he fit? But if you watch Chris Harris and you watch other cornerbacks, you can't tell me he's not an upgrade in a lot of positions for a lot of teams. But age factors into this, and it's how the industry views you, not how the athlete views himself. So I give it a, still a chance. I just based on how last offseason went, they weren't close. Chris wanted fifteen million per. They didn't get close to that. Is that still the number? If that's the number, Broncos are going to have a lot of cap room. So would they say, you know what? Chris played this out. He played well in Vic Fangio's defense. We have no idea what we're going to get from Bryce Callahan. Let's go all in and, and keep Chris. I don't, you know, that's not been their posture in, in offseason negotiations with guys on their team, but maybe there's an exception to be made with Chris. Callahan complicates it. If Callahan were healthy, I'd say there's no chance Chris comes back. But I don't know how you can bank on how Callahan being ready. You know, I know he's going to miss a year and maybe he'll be healthy, but I think that's an extreme roll of the dice to think he's going to be healthy next year just based on the last year and a half. Troy Rank uh, with us. One word to describe how you look at Brandon Allen's start on Sunday. Fortunate. <laughs> uh, he, he's getting a chance. And I love the fact that he's grinded for four years. I can appreciate that. I mean, coach kids, you, you see him go from nowhere on a roster to starting and being one of your better players. I love the fact he won't let the dream die. And he's getting an opportunity that most never get, a chance to start an NFL game at quarterback. It is unfortunate in this side. It's fortunate for him, but unfortunate that I don't think any Bronco fans want to see him play. They want to see Drew Locke play. So he gets his opportunity. And it's ill time because everyone wants to see Drew Locke, but that's going to happen. It's just not going to happen uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, all, right, all right, go ahead, Mark. I got one more for, but yeah, yeah. I, I was just going to say, what what do you know about uh, Joe Flacco? How bad is the neck injury? Why the second opinion? You know, all all the give us just whatever info you have on Flacco. Yeah, it's a herniated disc in his neck. It's a significant injury in terms of you know you're looking at minimum five to six weeks out. And you start then you're at week 14, Mark, and he hasn't been practicing. So I don't see any scenario in which he returns this season. Uh, I expect him to be placed on the IR at some point, whether that's this week or whatever. I, I fully expect him to land on the IR. And, again, there is a chance he's played his last snap in Denver because while they reworked his contract and they would take a $13.6 million cap hit to cut him next year or try to move him, they would still save $20 million in salary. So the idea they can't move on from him, while it'd be a little, you know, a little more clunky, they clearly could move on from him. So he might have played his last snap in Denver. Okay, uh, you're our resident baseball expert. Uh, World Series has gone to a Game 7. All the road teams have won throughout the first six. Uh, who do you like tonight? I just can't imagine a series where no home team wins a game. But I don't trust Grinky. And if I knew Scherzer was healthy, I'd pick the Nationals. I but I just don't know with this triceps with Scherzer. I have no idea why I was warming up last night to go in unless they're like, hey, he might not feel good tomorrow. And we got to uh, just use him tonight. But I'm going against what I'm going against logic that I've followed for a million years covering sports. That the home team has a slight advantage. I think Houston finds a way to win a close game. All right, Troy. Thank you. Thanks, Troy. Yep, see you guys. All right, there he goes. Troy Rank, our Denver 7 insider. He is presented by uh, Tranny Law. And, you know, when it comes to Brandon Allen, he's kind of the forgotten man in all this. You know, we start talking about Drew Locke and uh, Chris Harris. And, oh, yeah, by the way, Brandon Allen, that's your starting quarterback coming up on uh, on, on Sunday. And I have, I have zero expectations. Uh, I don't consider his start uh, part of the plan. I, I don't think that there's any answers when it comes to this guy. Uh, there's no way you can go with with any expectations whatsoever. But you know what? I'll give the kid credit. 
He has taken a game that uh, a few days ago I was thinking I would have absolutely very little interest in. So all of a sudden now I'm curious as heck. Because you know what? Look around the NFL. Look around an NFL that is now being dotted with guys like Kyle Allen, right? Undrafted. Yeah. Doing wonderful things for the Panthers. Gardner Minshew, Minshew Mania, six-round pick. Look what he's doing. And it kind of goes with what, you know, it's a big reason why I'm a big fan of the khaki pants strategy. Um, And that doesn't even include undrafted guys and guys that are taken in the sixth round. But it goes along with what Kyle Shanahan told you in a meeting, that it's getting harder and harder to evaluate quarterbacks coming out of college. There are so many quarterbacks now who are getting uh, uh, tremendous training and experience from the high school level on. And a lot of these guys fall through cracks. A lot of these guys end up in in, in programs where they're they're not celebrated. They're not five-star recruits, but they get a chance to throw the heck out of the football. They get a chance to run pro-style offenses, and they have the kind of skills, and more importantly, the kind of makeup, the kind of intelligence that would work well at the NFL level. And it's why these guys more and more are are showing that they can play. Uh, you know, the, the, the winningest quarterback since Peyton Manning left here is Trevor Simeon, a seventh-round draft choice. So I'm not counting on it. No way you can be foolish enough to count on it. But there's enough happening around this league where you got mm. to at least be curious – Right. About what Brandon Allen might be able to do? Yeah, well, you you have to be. There's no question you have to be curious. I Here's the curious thing, though, Mike. And, and this was, you know, that conversation I had on, on FS1 yesterday that, you know, I've gotten a little bit of heat. Uh, well, I mean, some people are like, ooh, I can't believe you said that about John Elway and not trusting that he could fix, you know, what's going on here. Um and, and I would tell you this, what what was curious or, or what made me feel like, well, you're right, is had they not thought they were still in it at 2-5, and five, they would have activated Drew Locke and let him practice? Because that's what, I mean, that's what Troy Rank just said, is it not? That had they thought they were not in it, had they had this rebuilding attitude, he would have been activated after week six, he'd have been practicing for the last couple of weeks, and he'd be ready to roll against Cleveland. But because they thought they were still in it at two and five, they're still living in this pipe dream world. They still think that they're talented enough to do that, that now you've set his development and a look at him back another three or four weeks. I know it's hard to give them the benefit of the doubt right now, but but what about the idea that they truly, truly like this kid, they believe he's got a bright future, and they just don't want to risk it by putting him out there, A, when he's not ready, and B, behind an offensive line that has 72 guarding his, his, his blind right. side. Well, that's which is fine. But you chose not to activate him because why? Because you thought that Riddick was going to come off the IR and save your season? Because you thought you might need another special teams player? Because you thought, why? Like, wh- like why, Mike? Why, you thought that, that, that the 53rd guy on your roster is going to be the difference between you winning and you losing? I mean, again, you're, I understand and I love Elway's competitiveness. I do. And, you know, and he's one of the most competitive people on the face of the planet. So I love that. But at some point, at some point, you have to be realistic about what your team is. So not activating Drew Locke after week six where he could have come to practice and, and you could have at least gotten a look the last couple of weeks that be, because because you thought maybe you had a chance, maybe you had a chance at, at two and four or two and five or, you know, whatever your record is, that, that maybe, maybe you know, you're going to you, – lightning in a bottle and all of a sudden Noah Fant was going to be great or somebody else would develop or, you know, or – you know, a guy who hasn't done anything in, in a couple of years and Deshaun Hamilton, all of a sudden he's going to pop for you? Like that that's what you were waiting on? And now you're going to wait on Drew Locke for another three or four weeks because you, have, you haven't you have looked at yourself honestly? Like you cannot fix something. if You cannot fix it if you're not willing to realize there's an issue. 
That's and and that's why look I get heated again. That's why I get pissed off. It's like if you're not going to admit that there's an issue, how are you ever going to fix it? This is uh, KKFN and KKFN HD1 Longmont Denver. I am doing question mark millennial Ben. <laughs> Joel Clatt joining us here in just a couple of moments. Uh first though question mark presented by Breaks Plus and uh this one came in immediately following uh, the mention that I just made, no name on it, but it just says Gardner Minshew. Really? You really think Gardner Minshew is the guy? Well, uh, well, all right, you go ahead and answer that. But before you answer it, here's what Gardner Minshew has done so far. He's four and four. He has completed 62% of his passes. Mm-hmm. He's thrown 13 touchdowns to two picks. Yeah. And he also came here and beat the Broncos. So, I, I, you know, I, I'm not saying that Gardner Minshew is is the next Tom Brady as a six-round draft pick. But, come on, 13 touchdowns and two picks? Right. I mean, this is, this is not just a, a six-round draft pick. This is a rookie who is showing exceptionally um, – Great decision making when it comes to throwing the football. To and, the point, by the way, to the point where the guy they spent ninety million dollars on in Nick Foles, yeah, they were saying, it, who, "Who's in a hurry to get him back?" Right there, which they're saying, "Hey, uh, there were there were a lot of there was a lot of speculation yesterday that they would try to move Nick Foles." So, uh, hey, listen, Gardner, Gardner Minshew, like it doesn't matter. And I know the quarterback position is a bit different, bit different because everybody puts such a value, you know, on on first round. You can't find them if you don't get them in the first round, first round, first round. And guys that are third and fourth rounders or, or second and third rounders get elevated in the first round. They don't belong there. So I, I know there's this 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 narrative that's been created over the years, and the, you know, if you don't find them in the first round, you're not gonna you, you can't get one, you know. And so, which is asinine, but it is what it is. There are dudes that are, are are just. I'm telling you, there are guys that just get it, that just understand it, that just get to like they don't reach their full potential until they hit the NFL. And then there are guys that get to the NFL and and they're like you know they're like a a, a flower in the so, the in the hot summer heat you know in the direct sunshine just wilt and. Until you get here, you just don't know. And I don't know what Gardner Minshew is going to be long term, but right now he's playing really good football. He's playing smart football. And, right. And, you know, the thing about the way that we look at quarterbacks, everyone's like, well, you know, look at look at the talent, look at the arm. Yeah, look at Mitchell Trubisky. <laughs> guys, guys got an absolute hose for a right arm. So? So? I mean, he can't play. And, you know, Gardner Minshew – all he does is make good, smart decisions. Okay, so right. you're telling me, hey, hey, listen, Gardner Minshew is a flash in the pan. 13 touchdowns, two picks, that's a flash in the pan. But let me tell you, Baker Mayfield, now Baker Mayfield's where it's at. Baker Mayfield, through 21 games in the NFL, has thrown 26 picks. Think about that. Mm-hmm. He's averaging more than an interception per game. His touchdown-to-interception ratio is, Thus far in his career is 33 touchdowns to 26 picks. He's got six touchdowns and 12 picks this year. Where is he? Uh, but, uh, but, no, his no, 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 but, but oh no, Gardner Minshew is a, you know, we, we, we you know, come on. Right. Why, why are you putting any stock in Gardner Minshew? Where Baker's is where it's at. Baker's wh- still completing. Uh, well, he's at only 57% this year. This year. Yeah. 57 percent. 57 percent. But he was the he was the most accurate, uh, the most accurate college or football player ever, right? The most accurate accurate quarterback ever. Like like I still think that Baker Mayfield can play. Don't don't get me everybody's wrong. gonna throw us in the trash. Um, but you know I think I think he needs to mature. He needs to grow up. He needs to make better decisions. And I think that's you know part of that is on that organization in the first place anyhow because of you know the decisions they made. Um. <laughs> So I mean I think there's a lot of there's a lot of issues going on there, but uh, um, you know do I do I do I think you're going to throw Baker Mayfield away? No, but 
You're right, Gardner Minshew is making great decisions, and he's making plays, man. He's keeping plays alive, and he's making them. But no, we need the unpredictability. We need the swagger. We need the cockiness. Baker Mayfield. Mm. 20, 26 interceptions in 21 games. Yeah, that's not good. That's not good. <laughs> that is not good. We'll get uh, Joel Clad on with us here in just a uh, second. Our weekly visit with Joel. We love our time with Joel. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joel Joel would, would have hated coming into work this morning. I mean, this guy. Oh, he's not a snow Oh, guy. my goodness. He did not like the cold weather. I can't tell you how many times he would come in really? here on a cold morning. He's a Colorado kid, though, I know. Right? That's the thing. But I, I can't tell you how many times he would sit in, in, in your chair, uh-huh. which is empty right now but has the, the giant Mark Schlereth fathead in its place. But I can't tell you how many times on a cold, cold, I mean, nine degrees this morning, I can't tell you how many times Joel, a Colorado kid, would come in here and really, probably for the first two hours of the show, wouldn't take off his gloves, wouldn't take off his winter cap. You shut your mouth when you're talking to me. Am I right, Joel? You hate the cold. You're damn right I hate the cold. <laughs> That's what, that surprises me, Joel. I mean, you're a Colorado kid. You You don't. You know, I used to be one of those guys when when I was playing at Colorado. Like, I never wore sleeves, uh-huh. you know, because I was like, oh, you know, if, if I'm going to ask the offensive lineman to be tough, then I'm going to, you know, tough it out. I played in game. We played at Iowa State one time. It was 10 degrees, didn't have sleeves on. And, and I came to the realization a few years ago that there's two things that I'm just absolutely done with in my life. One, being cold. Two, being hurt. Like I'm over it. Like I, I don't, I need, I don't need to deal with any more pain and I hate being cold. Like hate being cold. And, and Mike's right. I used to roll in there and I'm not a morning person anyways, which I always thought was strange that I was on a, on a morning drive show and I would just sit there and I wouldn't talk during the commercials and I would keep my beanie on and my gloves on. And I would just pout during the yeah. commercial, which is why I was so crappy on the air. Yeah, it was a it was a hoot, Mark. It was a lot of fun. What, hap- oh, what, what happens? You go to the broadcast booth now, like you you did what you do Ohio State last week, but the windows are open. You know, it's getting yeah. to be that time of the year, and you got to have the yeah. windows open because you got to feel the crowd. You got to feel the presence of the game. It's cold in the booth. Like you you bundled up in the booth. Okay, so we. <laughs> This is this is this is sad and whatever you know. I mean, it is what it is. We actually have extra generators that we put up in the booth so that we don't blow a fuse, and then we have like four or five space heaters under the desk. Uh huh. And then as soon <laughs> as soon as we're done on camera, it's like. I'm I'm coming off onto the sidelines, and I put the big winter coat on, and I put my gloves on, and I'm a total sissy once uh, the camera turns off. (laughs) We have all sorts of space heaters, and I've got coats on up there and everything. Because here's the thing. Like, I'll start stammering if I'm cold. Like, I can't talk. And so (laughs) we have about five space heaters up there. (laughs) Man. And I, oh, hey, geez. I could see it with Gus too because Gus weighs maybe a buck twenty. Like, oh, Gus he's, a, is... he's a featherweight right now. He's a featherweight. Man. Oh, and sometimes for the young cameras, he just looks at me and he was like, he's like, man, I'm old. I don't care if I've got a coat on. <laughs> so it's, I mean, it is, it, it is what it is. And I've been ruined by living here in Southern California. Like, I was just talking with with Sarah, my beautiful wife. And it's we had like the window cracked last night, and it got down to like fifty eight, and we were like, "Whoa, it's a little chilly in here!" Like, my goodness. Oh, man. And that's my favorite part yeah. about living here: not paying the taxes, obviously, or the traffic. But when cold is fifty eight, right, like you're good living, man. Yeah, wow. yeah you good are point. a diva, man. You are the Mariah Carey of broadcasters. That's mm. that's for sure. I'll require this. I would I'll like require that. Red I'll Skittles <laughs> only. <laughs> red. <laughs> Skittles. <laughs> All no right. Green bull crap. I want yeah. red. All right, uh, yes. quarterback. All right, Bronco fan. I, I gotta gotta ask you how you. What's your take on everything going on with the Broncos right now? Joe Flacco out. So Brandon conflicted. Allen in. What's going on with Drew Locke? All that stuff. I'm so conflicted right now because, you know, I'm sure that some people listening saw 
you know, my initial reaction on Twitter and I kind of blasted the Broncos because it seems very convenient, seems very convenient, this injury. After Joe Flacco rightly criticized the horrendous play calling, I mean horrendous play calling, at the end of that game and, and during critical moments of that game, I feel his pain. You know, there's nothing worse as a quarterback than feeling like you're in a prize fight with one hand tied behind your back, which I think is what Flacco was feeling. And he voices it, and then all of a sudden, conveniently, he's he's injured. So two things that I think were going on here, or one of two things, I guess I should say. Either Joe realized even before the press conference that he did that he wasn't going to be playing in the next few weeks, and he realized that he had this injury, and he was like, you know what, screw it, I'm probably not going to be here anyways, I'm probably going to the IR, let's air the laundry. That's that's number one scenario. Number two scenario is he's not hurt as bad as, as the reports um, are suggesting, and he went out there, aired the dirty laundry, and the Broncos said, okay, hey, why don't you walk in here, hey, guess what, you've got a herniated disc. I, don't, I probably believe the first scenario more than the second, but I have a hard time believing that he walked in there with some idea that he was still going to be the quarterback this week and then airing that dirty laundry. It seems like they knew beforehand that this was going to kind of end the relationship. Yeah, and now now you're sitting there with two backup quarterbacks. You got Brandon Allen and, and Drew Locke, who they're not ready to bring in. And, and this is perplexing to me. They could have brought Drew Drew Locke off of the IR two weeks ago and had him practicing, but they were still quote unquote. And I'm using air quotes here, and I'm using sarcastic voice. They were still thinking they were in it. Um, I don't know what film they've been watching. Certainly not the same film that I've been watching, but. Uh, now you're sitting there with Brandon Allen. What do you know about this kid from, you know, he's never taken an NFL snap. Nobody on the roster has uh, at the quarterback position. So what do you know about yeah. him going in here? No, well, I mean, he's got a lot of pro style um, snaps in his background um, from the college ranks. I think that, that that bodes well. But if anyone believes that this is anything more than a stopgap, you know, I mean, I, I think that they'd be naive and lying to themselves. I don't think Brandon Allen's the, the plan for the future. I think this is a guy that happens to be there that is going to run out there and start a few games before they can potentially get Drew Locke on the field and see what they have. Because let's make no mistake about it now, they're going to be in the top 10, probably top eight uh, picks in the NFL draft, and they're going to have to make a decision about quarterback. Um, that has to do, that has to be made about Drew Locke at some point. So this start for Brandon Allen, as much as I'd love for him to succeed and hopefully he does so that he can extend his NFL career somewhere as a backup somewhere in the league, I'm rooting for him. I really am. Uh, this is nothing more than a stopgap for Denver because their quarterback decisions are in the future. Uh, in the next few months, they're going to have to decide on Drew Locke and decide on what they're going to do in the NFL draft because there's going to be a few different guys available uh, at that selection. Uh, and let's just say they pick sixth, okay? Um, and I think I'm being generous with six. If they pick sixth, I think at most there's only two quarterbacks off the board, maybe just one at that point. And so you're going to have potentially um, the – Ability to choose between any number of Jake Beeson, Justin Herbert, Tua Tungavailoa, Jake Fromm, um, the kid at, uh, where is it, Utah State, Jordan Love. Um, there's, there's a few guys, so they're going to have to make a decision. In your opinion, who's the best of the bunch? You know, I haven't I'm, – I'm still so, so much in college mode that – I lean towards Tua because of the team he plays on and, and the production that he puts up. I will tell you, I think that the dark horse in the draft next year, uh, if he comes out, and I think that's a question, is Eason from Washington. Uh, I watched the tape. I'm doing Oregon this week, so I watched the tape of Oregon and Washington from uh, last week. And in that game, Jacob Eason outplayed Justin Herbert. Now, I know you don't want to put too much stock in just one game, but even though Oregon won, I think Eason does some things. He shows the same physical gifts that Herbert does, and then he shows a bit better acumen as far as his progressions, anticipating throws, which I think is the most important quality. 
So I think a dark horse in all this, guys, would be the Washington quarterback, Jacob Beeson. Who is the quarterback out there in the league that has the most athletic ability, is big, tall, fast, can really throw it, but has no uh, football acumen? Because that's usually the, the style that we go for. Oh, jeez. <laughs> There's plenty of those. I mean, college <laughs> football is littered with those guys. I mean, they're they're all over the place. Um, is Herbert one of those uh, guys? No, Herbert is, is – I think he's a, a bona fide first-rounder. I, I would I – would, evaluate him at least to this point as a guy that has better potential i would evaluate him higher than a josh allen who came out from wyoming and is now a buffalo okay all right um i, I want to go quickly back to uh drew lock do you, do you the broncos what we're what we're being told is that the broncos just feel like drew lock is not ready he hasn't had enough time to practice and they just want to be very careful before they put him in there. Read, read between the lines there. Is is that genuine uh, uh, concern for the kid? They believe he can be really good, and they just don't want to put him in until they're ready? Or does that tell you that maybe they're cooling on Drew Locke? No, I think that that's self-preservation mode, Mike. Um, I think if there's any question about what he – is ready for or is not ready for remember that's his play is not an indictment just of him but it's also an indictment of them and their evaluation right so it to some degree not playing him is also protecting themselves um you always have to remember that in particular with the heat that they've been getting from a front office standpoint and the and the misses and evaluations that they have had in particular at that position so the last thing that they can do, you could you could say, I don't want to say the last nail because I, who knows? I think John might have a longer leash than people in Denver realize. But in particular with kind of the questions that are going on above John, right, uh, with the organization, how it's going to be structured and what's going on moving forward with the ownership group, so on and so forth. All of those things matter, right? But the last thing that John wants is to throw a guy out there that is an indre- uh, that is a direct um, indictment of him. Um, and if he doesn't think he's ready, then he's not going to put him out there. So while it can be true that it's an evaluation of Locke himself, it's also, it's also somewhat of, of a tip or a hat tip that maybe we're not as confident as we feel we should be. And we don't want that type of pressure on ourselves. So isn't that exactly, I mean, that just lines up with the criticism that I've had this entire time. You're fooling yourself. As an organization, you, you're you fooling yourself if you think that you're competitive right now or you're close to being competitive. And Yeah, I don't understand be... the rhetoric about the competitiveness, Mark, right? Like, do they, do they think people believe them? Right? Like, right. let's just put it this way. If you're evaluating the team and supposed to be building the team and you believe this is competitive, that's a problem. I would almost rather you say, yeah, you're like, we're rebuilding right now. I think Dolphins fans, although few and far between, have a better understanding of like, hey, yeah, you know, I mean, this year kind of is what it is. Rather than, you know, getting chicken salad and being told it's a filet. And it's like, no, it's not a fillet. Like, don't don't tell me that this is competitive because if you believe this is competitive, if you believe that this is on the tracks to competitiveness, there's a problem. Well, they'll say three three games lost at the at the end on field goals. We're that close. Play here, play there. You know, we get we get Trubisky down on fourth and fifteen, we win. Vaughn wraps up Jacoby Brissett, we win. That, that's why some people would buy into the idea that they are competitive. But that's the NFL. This is not this is not college football where when you're close, you're close. Right? Like, every game is a one-score game. Every game. So you are what your record suggests you are. Period. I, I just don't. Do you think you're close with this quarterback position? It's the most important position on the field. If you're not going to have superior quarterback play, your roster has got to be 
as good of a roster as there is in an NFL uh, organization in the last decade to be competitive for a Super Bowl. This roster is not even close. This offensive line is a bottom 10 offensive line in the league. If you have a bottom 10 offensive line in the league, you are not competitive. I don't care if it's a field goal. I don't care if it's a, a muffed punt. I don't, like, sorry, you're going to continue to be in those situations. And by the way, you lose those games. So I, I don't quite understand that. Like, this is the NFL. This is not horseshoes and hand grenades. Right, close doesn't cut it. And this is not college football where Joel can do a game where one team has, from a talent standpoint, I mean, you can just go out and you don't have to out-scheme anybody. You can out-talent people. And, That's and, right. and there's a huge difference college football-wise to the National Football League where everybody has a lot of talent. Then it becomes, you know, then it becomes um, how do you scheme people and, and then how do you protect your weaknesses? And if you've got a weakness would, at the quarterback position, you damn well better have a, a strong group up front that understands protection and a coaching staff. More importantly, Joel, a coaching staff that understands protection. Well, not only that, but I and like if you watch Denver and you watch their games, I think a couple of things are, are pretty clear. It is an average to below average roster with – Bottom five QB play, bottom 10 O-line play, and then the overall game plan and coaching, if you were just to rank the coaching, it would be somewhere in the 23, 22. Like, there's more elements of the Denver Broncos that are in the bottom 10 of the league that are in the top 10 in the league. What's What, if any, other than, well, uh, let's say Von Miller, right? Von Miller. Period. Maybe the defense would get you, you know, top 12 in the league, if you will. I think that the defense is pretty good. I think that they're fast. I think that Von Miller has got to get Brissett on the ground. When you're the best player on the team and you've got the quarterback dead to rights, that's the game. Like, you've got to get him on the ground. And so I'd give them the defense as the top 10 in the league. What other element of this organization is top 10 in the league? Uh, before we go... Joel Clapp presented by uh, Audi Flatirons. I understand that you saw the video that uh, DeHuff and I did as I was trying to find out, get to the bottom of who took our tasty cakes. And, Listen, uh, I could you... have told you. I, you guys, I know you just hired Tyler Columbus. That's all I needed to hear. You know it's Columbus. It, well, he admitted to it. He did? Yes, it was Columbus. Mm. Hey, what's up, Columbus? Speak. <laughs> But, but but Joel, as as somebody who understands my affinity for Twinkies, you could probably understand the anger that I was feeling about the Tasty Cakes being taken. I mean, I can't even imagine. I can't. The only thing that would make you even more mad than that is if those Twinkies were a year old <laughs> or, or I, more. Or you know, I, because Columbus must have the, the metabolism really... of a hummingbird. Is as big and skinny as he is, and he can just eat Tasty Cakes all day long. I mean, listen, I, I totally agree with you. I don't know what he's doing. Is it, does he have a Peloton bike? Does he just ride it for two straight hours a day or something like that? I don't Is know. Is he sitting on there? Is he one of those people in the in the commercials that has, like, their $1,600 Peloton bike on some sort of, like, birchwood platform <laughs> overlooking his, his garden or something like that? He's just riding it for two hours. Yeah. He's like, He's like, playing for a tie. Got to eat some tasty, tasty cakes today. Playing for a tie. And listen, I think it's easy to blame D-Mac, but let's, you know, let's, let's take it easy on D-Mac. D-Mac he's, he's clearly, you know, dealing with some things. <laughs> Issues. Yeah. Thank you, Joel. All right. Thank you, Joel. Well, yeah, no, no problem, who you guys. Got, who you I got haven't this... gotten any tasty cakes. So. Who, you, who you got this week? Oregon at Utah, USC, excuse me. So I'll, I'll be watching Herbert live. I'm evaluating him all week. I'll tell you more about him next week. All right. Can't wait. We'll, nice. go, we'll get you some tasty cakes, okay? Yeah. Oh, right. Come on. Yeah, we'll take guy care can't of you. have a, a tasty cake yeah, or something? We'll, we'll take care of you. We'll take care of you. Thank you, Joel. Later, bud. See ya. Joel Klatt, presented by Audi Flatirons. All right. So a uh, lot to uh, digest there. Uh, including uh, him kind of putting on the tinfoil cap there when it comes to the uh, yes. what's going on with uh, yes. the Broncos and Joe Flacco and their relationship, and uh, do we look at this injury, air quotes, a little bit different? That's next.
Hey guys, Mark Schlereth here from my friends at West Rock Coffee. You guys know coffee, junkie, guilty is charged. The only coffee we drink in studio, West Rock Coffee, the official coffee of Schlereth and Evans. Light roast, dark roast, medium roast, even decaffeinated, guys, all truly delicious. You're going to love West Rock Coffee. Now you can find it at two exclusive locations. One, in your King Supers. Swing into your King Supers. Do me a favor. Head to the freezer aisle, International Foods. Pick up my new green chili, my new queso dip, excuse me, and my green chili. And then head over to the coffee aisle. Find the West Rock Coffee. It's the gold package with the elephant on the front. Two things to warm you up on a frosty Denver day. Or if you're driving around town today, you need a little shot in the arm, you need a little uh, warm me up, swing into your Colorado Loaf and Jug convenience stores. Pour yourself a cup of the Mezza Morning Blend from West Rock Coffee. They're exclusively serving West Rock Coffee there. So two great locations. One, uh, Colorado Lope and Jug convenience store. Swing in, pour yourself a cup of that coffee. Or your King Supers in the coffee aisle. The gold package with the Elephant logo on the front. That's West Rock Coffee. West Rock Coffee. You're going to love this coffee, guys. What we drink in studio every day. West Rock Coffee, the official coffee of Schlereth and Evans. Do yourself a favor and go get some today.
Just had Joel Clad on, our weekly visit with Joel, presented by Audi Flatirons. And uh, he he didn't shy away from the fact that he had uh, put up a tweet that he uh, brought down that expressed his frustration, concern, and and questioning what is exactly going on with Joe Flacco and the Broncos. And raising some questions about the legitimacy of just how much is Joe Flacco really hurt, and he expanded on that with us. Seems very convenient. Seems very convenient, this injury. After Joe Flacco rightly criticized the horrendous play calling, I mean horrendous play calling, at the end of that game and and during critical moments of that game, I feel his pain. You know, there's nothing worse as a quarterback than feeling like, you're in a prize fight with one hand tied behind your back, which I think is what Blacko is feeling. And voices it, and then all of a sudden, conveniently, he's he's injured. So two things that I think were going on here, or one of two things, I guess I should say. Either Joe realized even before the press conference that he did that he wasn't going to be playing in the next few weeks, and he realized that he had this injury, and he was like, you know what, screw it. I'm probably not going to be here anyways. I'm probably going to the IR. Let's air the laundry. That's that's number one scenario. Number two scenario is he's not hurt as bad as, as the reports um, are suggesting. And he went out there, aired the dirty laundry, and the Broncos said, okay, hey, why don't you walk in here? Hey, guess what? You've got a herni- herniated disc. I, don't, I, I probably believe the first scenario more than the second, but I have a hard time believing that he walked in there with some idea that he was – still going to be the quarterback this week and then airing that dirty laundry. It seems like they knew beforehand that this was going to kind of end the relationship. Hmm. What do you think? <clears throat> his fr- I know his frustration boiled over. I, I mean, his frustration boiled over and that, you know, I mean, what did everybody say a week ago after the KC game? We just wa- wish he showed some emotion, right? We wish he would you know, at least look like he had a heartbeat. And and he showed it in a press conference afterwards. And then um, I just believe his frustration boiled over. I don't think there was any, there was any, like, intent to say, hey, you know, I know that they're going to bench me anyhow or uh, my neck is that bad. I, I, I just don't, I don't, I don't think there's a conspiracy, quote unquote, going on. Um, but the frustration certainly boiled over. And I don't know how 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 I don't know how much he knew he was hurt, um, you know. So I, I mean, he I, was being he was being tended to on the sideline, getting right. his neck worked on before he ever said anything. Right. Yeah. Um, and look, I know a lot of people out there. You know, whenever we bring up some of the the drama that may be going on behind the scenes with any team, think, oh, you're making too much of it. I think a lot of people like to believe that everything's hunky-dory with the way that a professional organization runs. Everything's black and white, and there is no drama. Of course there's drama. I mean, you know, the the amount of little fires and big fires that Gary Kubiak had to put out uh, in the course of the Broncos winning a Super Bowl was legendary behind the scenes. So it, it, it isn't always easy, and there's always stuff going on. But right. to... That that's quite a leap to suggest that the Broncos were so upset at Joe Flacco for calling out Rich Scangarello that they basically you know say when he walked in, hey, we happen to notice you're getting your neck worked on during the game. Guess what? We've decided that's a herniated disc and you're done. I mean, does it? You tell me. No. I, I mean, th- does it work that way? You've been around this league forever. You you <laughs> you've probably seen and heard some things that will would blow people's mind. Are these the kind of things that can happen? Well, I mean, theoretically, could they happen? Yeah, would they happen when you have no other options? It, it, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think you're like, I'm so mad at Joe Flacco. We're going to put him on IR because we we can't wait to start the Brandon Allen. You know, I mean, they they're not just looking at their roster, the way their roster is constructed, Mike. The, the way that Drew Law can't come off their roster, so they're going to have to bring up a practice squad guy in Ripon. Um, you, you think they had plans on – you think they they planned on dumping Joe Flacco? 
like just the way they're constructed, there's no way, right? Right? Am I right? Like if you put the, if you add it all up, there's no way they said that. That's it. You know, we've got a great contingency plan here. We've been working on this for a while, and damn it, you know, Joe Flacco's pissed us off, so we're going to move in a different direction. No way. Yeah, it make it 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 strains credibility to think that, you know, a team that is supposedly all about win now, uh, finally got to the breaking point where they said, yeah, now. Let's move forward with three quarterbacks, none of whom have ever taken a snap in the NFL. Right. And the one guy that we drafted. Because we're, so the... we're so mad at Joe right. Flacco. The one guy that we drafted in the second round, well, we didn't activate him in week six because, you know, we thought we were still. Because you, like, if, if what Troy Rank said was true, they thought they were still in it. They thought they were still in it partially because Joe Flacco was going to keep them in it. It just is the. There's just a lot, Mike, when you look at this team, again, there's just a lot of things that you look at, and I know hindsight's always twenty twenty. so I, I, I know it's always, you know, there's a revisionist history aspect to it, and you look at it and you go, well, you know, in hindsight, that makes zero sense, but there's just a lot of things um, right now that, that you look at and you're like, wow, that was, you know, that, that just has not been a great decision. But... While I agree that there have been a lot of bad decisions made, and and I know that that ego is a, is a huge part. You you've joked from day one. Mm-hmm. You know you think there's ego in a locker room. Walk up the back stairs right. to the the front offices and see what the egos are like. I get all that, but but I can't imagine. And and boy, it is we are we are in a world of trouble if the Broncos and John Elway would react to that so strongly that they would do that to Joe Flacco. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to give him in the front office a, a heck of a lot more credit that, that they would not resort to that. Good for you, bud. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I don't buy the conspiracy theory about Joe Flacco criticized the organization and therefore, you know, Joe Flacco doesn't get to play anymore. I, I, I don't, I'm not going to go, I, I won't go to that now, level of I mean, conspiracy. Emmanuel Sanders, I think, talked his way out of here. You know, I think he was going to be gone anyway, but I think the the uh, timing of the move was sped up by the fact that he, he made it clear that he wanted to move on. Uh-huh. But, I, you know, I think this was an organization that was prepared to do that anyway and wanted to get right. a look at what they had with some of their younger receivers. Um, and, and he didn't factor into their plans anyway, probably beyond this year. So that's one thing. But in, in, in the case of your quarterback, who, you know, when you brought him here, you said, we, we think he still has a lot left in the tank, that he's still in his prime, that we can win now, and the expectation is to win now with him mm-hmm. right now. And, you know, we, we, we stand by him through the first seven games. And then after that eighth game in which he happens to say, and, and air some frustration that, that has to be felt in other parts of that locker room, not just his frustration, that all of a sudden we're going to decide, oh, you, you went too far. You yeah. crossed us, and now that's you will it. pay. I, you know, that's – I love a good tinfoil cap conspiracy, but I, I I just don't feel it here. I don't either. I, I'm, I'm 100% with you. I just don't think they're going to go down that road. Now there is the matter of the second opinion. Does does that tell you anything, or is that just him getting a second opinion? No, no, that's just that's something that it used to not be allowed in the NFL, um, you know, and and that was something that was fought for in collective bargaining, and everybody has the right to get a second opinion, and you know, players just want to make sure that they're they're getting it straight from somebody that they trust that doesn't have a vested interest in the team. That, I mean, that's, that's the bottom line. Plus, is, there's been enough history of, uh, you know, doctors and training staffs around the, the NFL who looks, what's, plenty, what's, plenty of players have yeah. felt like, you know, are look, they really looking out the for Jets. me? Right, what's, right. What's, what's going, going on with right. the Jets right now? Yeah. That's I mean, wild. come on. That is a wild story, by the way. Uh, all right. Coming up. Uh, Brandon Allen, who is this guy, what to expect, 
I mean, if there's Minshew mania in Jacksonville, could we have uh, something similar happen here? That's next. Hey guys, what would you say if I told you about a real estate agent that will sell your house at a price at a time you agree they're pays you $5,000? It's crazy, but Troy Hanson will make the deal. All you have to do is pick up the phone and make the call. 720-900-4433 is the number. And I know selling your house, getting top dollar for it can be a frustrating process. It can take months, and you feel like maybe your agent isn't doing all they could to sell your house. They're sticking a sign on the ground and just kind of waiting for their phone to ring. You deserve an agent that's going to put his money where his mouth is. And that's what Troy does. Spends thousands every single month generating demand. Not your average realtor. He gets his uh, clients the most money in the shortest time. The only agent I've ever heard to guarantee to sell your house at your price. If he doesn't, he pays you $5,000, guys. I'm telling you what. Um, maybe you just want to know what your house is actually worth. Call Troy. 720-944-33. He'll give you the real value of your house. And if you want to sell it fast, he'll give you an all-cash offer, guys, and can close in as little as seven days. No tricks, no gimmicks, no high-pressure sales. You want the most money or a cash offer? Call Troy right now, 720-900-4433. That's Troy Hansford, the Hansford Real Estate Team of REMAX Unlimited. Give him a call, guys. It won't cost you a penny. 720-900-4433. That's 720 900 Forty-four, thirty-three.
Well, Brandon Allen, step right up. And look, no, nobody, nobody can realistically be, you know, sitting back and saying, you know, shades of Swag Kelly, you know, don't let Brandon Allen get a hold of this job. Yeah. Because <laughs> if Brandon Allen gets a hold of this job, man. He ain't letting it go. He ain't letting it go for the next 15 years. Yeah. Man, the Swag Kelly bunch. That was a, an interesting group. Where is Swag right now? Is where's he in Indy? That's a good question. Is was he in Indy for? He was, but is he still there? Or was he cut? Who cares? Now you, now you got me interested, right? Gosh, hold on. Is he still with? Uh, yeah, I guess he's still with the Colts. Really? Yeah. Well, there you go. Oof, I, don't think he's, I don't think he's on the active roster, though. We're lucky. No, we're lucky nobody hurt Jacoby right. Brissett. Well, he's got to get through not only Jacoby Brissett but Brian Hoyer. Right. But yeah, hey, he must he must be on the practice. If squad. he can, watch out. Oh my gosh, could you imagine? Oh man. Yeah, I think the NFL. I think the Broncos did the NFL a favor. By allowing Jacoby Brissett to beat them the other day. Right. Let's say Von Miller had been normal Von Miller and wrecked Jacoby Brissett. Then they would have turned to Hoyer and Hoyer would have, you know, Hoyer would have stopped it up. And then then they would have turned to Chad and over. Over. Then like Peyton who? Championship. Yeah. Anyway. um, All right. Now, this is, this is, this is not. Uh, what what we're looking at, but you know what you know where I'm th- you know why I'm thankful for Brandon Allen because he's taken a game this Sunday that at, in the immediate aftermath of the game against the Colts I was like Ugh. you know what's where where's my where's my motivation what what you know what are the storylines going to be where where is the uh, enthusiasm the curiosity the intrigue the mm. suspense when it comes to this next Broncos game, especially when it became clear that, yeah, they're in no hurry to put Drew Locke in there, you know? Right. So now all of a sudden here comes Brandon Allen, and, and you know what? There's a, there's at least enough curiosity because of what's going on in the league right now. And when you look at what Kyle Allen has done stepping in for Cam Newton, if you look at what Gardner Minshew has done stepping in for um, Nick Foles, Nick Foles. If you look at what, uh, you know, Mason Rudolph has done at times, stepping in right. for Ben Roethlisberger. I, you know, are, are these guys the answers? Are they here to stay? Are they the next Tom Brady? You know, all these things. I, of co- I love Tom Brady. Of course not. Likely not. But you know what? There's just enough happening right now in the NFL to at least sit back with a little bit of curiosity about Brandon Allen and go, hmm, I think I know how this is going to play out, but I'm kind of curious because you never know. Right. You just don't – listen, again, you just don't know. And the league is littered with stories about guys that nobody thought were going to have an impact or guys – Nobody thought we're going to be players that become somehow they become players. Kurt Warner, come on, stocking groceries, Kurt Warner, to the Hall of Fame. I mean, stop it. And it's lit. There's there's stories that are littered like that. The Tom Brady story, the Kurt Warner story. I mean, and not, you know, mostly at other positions, but, um, you know, Adam Thielen. Come on, Adam Thielen played at Mankato State. Right? I mean, how many of these stories are out there? Rod Smith. He's the greatest Bronco that's ever the greatest Bronco receiver of all time. Right? He was a free agent. Chris Harris Jr. was a free agent. I mean, come on. The the, the league is littered with these stories. So there is intrigue there. I mean, you you'll watch this with a certain amount of intrigue just because you don't know. You have no idea. And and the, the whole draft, as much as people want to make it a science, is not a science. Not even close. 
I love, I love, I love, every I love. time the rosters, every time we put a Broncos game on, we know that. I, lo- I love these folks. Yeah, look at Kyle Allen. Really? You see what happened when he was playing a real defense? Gardner Minshew? You really think Gardner Minshew's the guy? Just stop. This is laughable. Really? Okay. But those guys, we just automatically dismiss. But But Baker Mayfield is clearly the guy. I mean, Baker Mayfield's right. where it's at. Pay no attention to the fact that through uh, his NFL career thus far, he's averaging more than an interception per game. Okay? He's tied with Jameis Winston for most mm. interceptions. Winston's a bust. Okay? He's a bust. And Baker, But Baker Mayfield. Now, if, if I'm sitting here for this guy who just sent that in, if I'm saying that, hey, look, you know, the Gardner Minshew's, the Kyle Allen's, please. But, you know, where, where you got to really go is with the Baker Mayfields of the world. Really? Really? Or what? Right. The Mitch Trubisky, who has finally arrived at the point, didn't take too long, did it? Where Matt Nagy was actually asked yesterday, are you sticking with Mitch Trubisky? The guy who they moved right. up to get number two overall in the draft was is now being is now having his head coach being asked, uh, "You going to stick with him?" Yeah, and he's got to, and he's got to give the vet, dreaded vote of confidence. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's my quarterback. It, it, it's 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 hilarious, you know that the people who are still rooted in the idea that the only way you're going to find a true franchise quarterback is if you take him high up in the first round. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean come on. Look around. By, by the way, you know, the people who are like, see, Kyle Allen faced a real defense. Like, Kyle Allen is no good now. Remember that Cam Newton was 0 for 2 in his starts and played terrible. Now, he had an injury, so I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But Kyle Allen's, like, Kyle Allen had issues. He threw a couple picks, his first three picks. When all of a sudden you look up and you're down 28 nothing in the first quarter or whatever it was, like your game plan changes quite a bit. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Like, like there's some, yeah, their, their defense is legit, and you drop down because your your defense, I mean, can't stop anything. Yeah, yeah. First drive, the first drive was like, I mean, I called the freaking game. The first drive was like 11 plays, you know, 78 yard touchdown. It was like, I mean, like poop through a goose, Mike, and and all of a sudden. You know, oh, 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 gonna have to interrupt this. Uh huh. Have some breaking news. Really? I don't think. Uh, oh boy. So, uh, pro football talk mm-hmm. just sent out a tweet. Yeah. Two minutes ago, it says, okay. "Mark Schlereth, no reason to trust John Elway to fix the Broncos." <laughs> One of John Elway's former Broncos teammates thinks Elway doesn't have what it takes to lead the team back to the top. Goes on to say, Mark Schlereth, who blocked for Elway in both of his Super Bowl winning seasons, believes that Elway has made one good move in his time running the Broncos, convincing Peyton Manning to sign in Denver as a free agent, otherwise has been a failure. And they go on to quote what you said yesterday on FS1. Wow, that's uh you're trending, dude. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Yep. So that's pro- what was that from? Pro Football Talk? Pro Football Talk, you know, the whole um Mike Florio thing? Yeah. Yeah. But they they do they're very liberal with the way they dissect that, right? Uh they just kind of used a lot of your quotes. Yeah, well. I know it sounds a little bit it sounds a little bit harsh. Uh, you know what it is? You know what it sounds like to me? You know, it's honest. It's honest. What it is. I mean, come on. Yeah. It's honest. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Does, does, okay. Does it does it serve pro football uh, talks uh, business? They're in the business of getting clicks. And yes, yes you they, yeah. they put up a headline that is going to get some clicks. But you know what? If people take the time to actually read it and then read your quotes. Yeah. They're probably going to come away and go. Hmm. Yeah. And as they said, as Pro Football Talk themselves said at the end, here's what they say uh, after some of your quotes. Those are harsh words, but it's hard to disagree with Schlereth's point. 
The Broncos still haven't made the playoffs since Manny retired, and Elway is showing no evidence that he knows how to get them back to the postseason. Yeah, there you go. I mean, the bottom line is, is like, I, like I intimated or said, is that if you still think you're competitive, you're in, you know, I mean, you're fooling yourself. All right. Uh, by the way, very quickly, Wink Peek, I know we got a break. We'll break. I break. When are you on TV today? When can people see you t- uh, today on TV? On FS1? Uh, I am on. I'm on FS1 and uh, at noon today, so one o'clock Denver time. All right, check that out, All folks. Right. And Sandy Orlando coming your way next. All right, let's say good morning to Brent Iverson from Ideal Home Loans, folks to turn to for all your mortgage needs. Hey, Brent, I know that the rates are really low right now. It's great news. How does that help people that are trying to buy maybe their first home? Well, here's the great news. If you're out shopping for a home, thanks to low rates, you qualify for more home for the same payment. 30-year fixed rates right now, 3.625% with an APR of 3.791%. If you looked around six months ago, you qualify for as much as $60,000 more in home today thanks to low rates. Brent, does this also help out current homeowners? Well, it does. You know, if you looked at refinancing six months ago, you're going to save over $200 a month more today on a $300,000 loan than you would have if you'd taken advantage of rates six months ago but again these low rates are not going to last forever you've got to take advantage of them call ideal home loans today to find out how much you can save or qualify for at 303-867-7000 that's 867-7000 or as always you can apply online idealhomeloans.com equal opportunity lender regulated by dora nmls 136756 for terms and conditions call 844-45-IDEAL
I blame it on the road conditions myself. I'm completely disorganized to the point where Orlando Franklin just found something for me that was in your stack in, of in papers. my stack. And for and everybody that doesn't know, Sandy, he comes in here and he has 15 books. Oh, I know. Oh, it's, a couple notebooks. It's, it's, and it's, it's, <laughs> a, it's, a, it's a total mess. <laughs> it's a complete mess. But here we are, nonetheless, on a Wednesday morning in the Mile High City, 30th day of October, 2019. Oh, I'd ask you what you were watching last night, but I know it couldn't have been the Nuggets, right? Unless you no. went to a local establishment. No, it wasn't the Nuggets. What were you watching last night? I watched a little bit of the World Series you last did. night. Is this I... a breakthrough? As no. they say on the TV ad? <laughs> Is this a breakthrough? Yeah, basically, because, you know, I'm not a, a huge baseball I guy, but when a series is tied, oh. when a series is at 3 2, you got to. Tune in, Don't right? you love it? I and, mean, that, and that was riveting. Yeah. Don't you think? I mean, I know the final score was 7-2, to two, but you had uh, Davey Martinez getting thrown out, that whole seventh inning fiasco. You know about bad officiating. We've talked about bad officiating this year in the NFL. What about bad umpiring? Yeah. And then that whole fiasco with uh, they they take it. Not under the hood. They don't do it that way in Major League Baseball, but they put on the headsets and then after all that, they decide, well, the play's not reviewable, but they call the guy out anyway, as if they had reviewed it. I don't think you understood Doesn't what mean. I said, Sandy. I said I watched a, a little bit. You didn't make it to the seventh <laughs> inning. <laughs> I, I didn't, didn't make, make it, it all the seventh way. inning. I think I made it to, like, uh, I think it was the, the top of uh, the fifth. And I was like, uh, that's okay. That's pretty good. That, that's I'll, a start. I'm, I'm done. I want to watch a, a little TV and start winding yeah. down before sure. bed. Sure, sure. But apparently some good, good stuff me, happened. Yeah. Some good stuff happened. Some good stuff happened. And you know what? They, they basically, Washington gets rooked in the seventh inning. And it's a, a 3-2 game. And on the play in question, there would have been runners on second and third with nobody out. But they call interference on the runner going down to first base. So it's runner on first and one out. The, uh, the Nationals are going nuts. How does a runner... Get interference, though. He did not run inside the baseline, according to their determination. Looked like he ran a straight line to me right through the middle of first base, but the throw was bad. The throw was not only late, it was wide, and the throw hit the runner. As the first baseman was reaching for the throw unsuccessfully, his glove comes off, and the runners advanced to second and third, and the umpires, immediately the home plate umpire who made the call, Sam Holbrook, who was the new Don Denkinger. Uh, baseball fans will remember that from way back in the day. He's now the most controversial umpire. Uh, Sam Holbrook makes the call, the home plate umpire, and you can see it calling out, and you say, well, it's, it's not out. Yeah. And they end up calling runner interference, and uh, Kate Upton weighed in. She's not exactly an objective observer, being that Kate Upton is Mrs. Justin Verlander, who started the game for the Astros, yeah. the great right-hander, the Hall of Famer, who has started seven games in the World Series and never won a single one, which is an all-time record. Most starts in a World Series without getting a win. He didn't pitch badly, but anyway, it's a 3-2 game. So the Nationals are going crazy. They end up after a long delay. You think football replay takes a while. This would have put you to sleep. <laughs> uh, they put the runner back on first uh, with with one out. Rendon hits a home run for Washington. So maybe they lose a run, but they get two. They get, the t in effect, the two runners who should have been on second and third both score. So it's five to two. Martinez, Dave Martinez, the manager of the Nationals, between innings, after the inning is over, he comes out and resumes the argument. And this is a guy with a heart condition yeah. who's supposed to be sitting calmly in the dugout and not moving. He's going ballistic and has to be restrained by a couple of coaches. I saw they that. throw him out. Yeah, okay. They, they I, throw I, I saw that this morning. Which was probably good yeah. for Davey Martinez to get thrown out before he blew a gasket. And... Uh, it looks they like add two runs later on. Rendon drives in two more runs. They win seven to two. Live happily ever after. But uh, it was a wild night 
uh, at the old ballpark. It wasn't such a wild night uh, at Pepsi Center in downtown Denver. The Nuggets are 3-1. and one. They lose last night to Dallas. And the fact of the matter is, we were chatting about this, I think, off the air the other day. Nuggets haven't played very well since that opener. They were terrific in Portland. Yeah. They played three teams that aren't necessarily considered to be playoff teams or playoff contending teams for this year. Phoenix, they almost lost. They won by one in overtime, had to scramble to win that, almost blew that game. Uh, then in Sacramento the other night, it's pretty much nip and tuck. Uh, they win 101-94, but it's a tougher game than you'd think it should be. And then last night, they lose to Dallas, blowing an 11-point lead in the third quarter. Yeah, the biggest difference that I see with the Nuggets this year we thought that another year with this team being together that they were going to continue to score a ton of points and be excellent offensively, but that's not what we've seen in the first four games. No. We've seen a great effort each and every one of these games, I feel, defensively. They Pretty good went defense. out and they yeah. played and Pretty they showed good. that, hey, they've upgraded on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah. And that's good because that's what you're going to need down the stretch. That's what you're going to need – in the playoffs, that's what you're going to need in order to try to win a championship. But offensively, they got to get it going. They got to find a way. And and these things might take a little bit of time. You know, a lot of these guys have have been in different countries playing with other players and stuff like that. So they got to figure out a way to generate more offense and and shoot the ball a little bit better. But I do like the fact that they're getting to the 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 foul line a lot more than what I saw earlier in the year last year as well. Last night, uh, the defense was not great. They gave up uh, 26 in the fourth quarter. But you're right. Uh, the first half, the defense was worse, and they were up at the half. 61-60. It was an offensive game. Uh, second half, uh, the Nuggets were outscored 49-45. And the bench lost in the game last night. The starters are all in double figures for Denver. Millsap, 23. Jokic, 10, Murray 16, Barton 19, Harris 16. But here's the bench. Plumley, seven points, minus 18. Craigs, two points, minus 18. Grant, scoreless. Jeremy Grant did not score, minus 18. Monte Morris, six points, minus 13. Malik Beasley, seven points, minus 16. Bench lost the game. Everyone who played, except Powell, Scored in double figures for Dallas last night. Nine of their ten participating players scored in double figures. Yeah. Anywhere between 10 and 14 points. You talk about your balanced scoring. Dallas had it last night. It was not a good shooting game for Porzingis or Doncic. But, and Doncic missed a couple of free throws down the stretch that probably should have cost them the game. But the, uh, Dallas wins at 109-106. Uh, Jokic had a triple-double, but he did not play well. Yeah, being that the Nuggets love to go to their bench and, and play all five of their yeah their, oh they did from, again last night from uh, yeah, six to ten do. that's what they do yep you cannot have that lack of production when those guys are are on the court yeah they're getting killed with those guys that, on the floor last yeah night. so l- last night that you could exactly what you just said the bench lost the game because you know the nuggets they're trying to be able to sub out all their starters and put all their bench guys in and you got to have that same production that you've had in the first couple of games. And, and you could see why they're not a 4 0 team and now they're only 3 and 1 because the bench poured poorly, or played poorly last night. And Could be because of, of, of your too. style of play, because of your style of coaching, and because of you want to rest these starters, yep. the bench has to pick it up. Yeah. Oh, they can't be as bad as they were last night. And, and, and again, uh, Millsap was excellent. Uh, I wouldn't say anybody else was great. They're okay. Uh, Jokic plays 33 minutes and takes eight shots. That, it's not going to work. He's got to yeah. shoot more than that. He made four field goals last night in 33 minutes. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. He should be able, I don't know about dominate Dallas, because Dallas has some skill and a little bit of size, but he, he should be more uh, dominant and uh, take control of the game. And he did, along with Murray, in the fourth quarter in Portland and in the fourth quarter the other night in Sacramento. It uh, didn't quite happen for the Nuggets last night. When we come back, lots to talk about today, including a very anticlimactic NFL trade deadline. We were on the air when the only trade was made yesterday. That was Aqib Tlaib going from the Rams to Miami. There were no other trades yeah. between 12 and the 2 o'clock Mountain Time deadline yesterday. Zero. Zilch. No trades. We'll talk about that next.
Lots to get to today on this uh, Wednesday morning. Adrian Dater will join us at 945 from ColoradoHockeyNow.com, our weekly visit with Adrian, courtesy of Bud Light. And the latest avalanche injury to Gabriel Landeskog. We'll talk about that with uh, Adrian. Of course, Rantanen's still out. As play Florida tonight, and an old friend, Joel Quinville, returns to Denver as coach of the Florida Panthers. First time as coach of the Panthers, obviously, that uh, Joel has been back in town. Um, I think he did a few things after being fired by the Avalanche 11 years ago, and of course, uh, the new coach this year, first year with uh, the Florida Panthers. I'd have won two or three Stanley Cups. I think I think <laughs> just, a, first Stanley Cups. just a few. A pretty good coach. But uh, we will be talking also with Cecil Lammy later on uh, this morning, and we will have our rankings of power later on, and uh, we'll weigh in. The Broncos didn't move much uh, last week. It seems people gave them credit for being scrappy uh, throughout the course of most of the game against the Colts uh, the other day. But, of course, uh, the Broncos will be starting Brandon Allen and backing up Allen with either Brett Rippon or Drew Locke this weekend. But, oh, 2 o'clock came and went yesterday, and the Broncos did nothing, nor did the rest of the league between noon and 2 o'clock Mountain Time yesterday. We had the one trade to leave to Miami. No. When that we was woke it. up yesterday, that was it. Um, I, I thought the Broncos were going to spice it up. I thought they were going to move some guys. That, I thought they were going to try to acquire some more picks. And a guy that I said for the last couple of weeks was Chris Harris. I didn't see him being here. And it's surprising to me that the Broncos didn't get an offer high enough for Chris Harris where he was moved. But I think now, <coughs> excuse me, I think now it's don't be surprised if, if Chris Harris is the highest paid cornerback. In the NFL next year. Playing and for he's in a someone Bronco, other than No, Denver. he's in a Denver Bronco uniform. You're kidding. Yeah. You have uh, some insight on this that we should own? I, I, I don't have We're insight, just but it up. just doesn't make any sense to me that you don't move on from Chris. Well, here's the deal. You'll get a compensatory pick for him if he's yeah. a free agent. If that compensatory pick is better than anything you get in the trade. Why trade him for a fourth rounder or later if you're getting a third round compensatory? Why well, do that? And no one apparently offered as much as a third. Uh, and uh, Adam Schefter's reporting, and his source is pretty good, uh, yeah. since it's the guy in charge. I think the Broncos uh, are, it, are There were real... six teams who made offers, yeah. or they had conversations with six teams. Nobody offered a third. I, I think the Broncos are, are looking at this team and saying, hey, we got a lot of holes other places. We thought that Mike Munchak was going to be able to get Garrett Bowles right. Uh, Ron Larry continues to struggle. The, the lack of uh, depth at the wide receiver position now. we got to go get some more guys in here at that position with trading away Emmanuel Sanders and the lack of production as well. The lack of production in the tight end room. And then you need to create some depth on defense and also Isaac Yadam not developing the way that they thought that he would. I think they're looking at Chris Harris in the light now that we weren't going to give him away and now that no, teams are not smart. giving not, I wouldn't give him away. Yeah, teams are not giving us what we want. Now we got to try to re-sign this guy. And now, unfortunately for the Broncos, it's going to take a lot more. You're gonna sure. have he's to not make taking the, any hometown he, discount. Yeah, he's not time. taking a pay cut. You're probably going to have to make him the highest paid corner in the league. You look at what Kareem Jackson got from the Broncos, $11 million a year to come here to Jaylen play Ramsey, safety. What, what he's going to get. Yeah, I, I don't think Chris is going to get what Jalen gets, but I don't think Jalen's going to be signed before – What's it called next year before free agency opens? He yeah. still has another year on his contract. Yeah. I, I think Jalen's going to get signed around training camp next year, and, yeah, and that's when they're going to make him I happy. Agree. But with Chris Harris, you have an opportunity to sign him a lot a lot faster than that. So I, I just wouldn't be surprised, Sandy, if Chris Harris is in a Denver Bronco uniform next year and you see a deal get done before this season's up. Yeah, I, I just think they if they couldn't get a third rounder, if they couldn't get a second day pick. Yeah, you can't give them away. You, 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 you can't, can't trade them for a third day pick. By the way, they've got seven picks in the first four rounds next year. They have plenty of picks. Uh, you get to the point where you had nine or ten. What are you going to do with them? You're not going to make nine or ten draft picks. 
you're going to package some of that to move up or whatever, but you don't need nine or ten picks in the first four rounds. You need seven, and you need to draft the right people. I'd take the nine or ten, Sandy. <laughs> I would definitely take the nine or ten because right now I, how I, I look at it is Jawan James is here I and Dalton Reisner is here. So I, I'm going to use three picks on the, on the offensive line. <clears throat> I'm going to use uh, another pick at the – at the wide receiver position. I might even go get another tight end. So that's five out of the seven that they already have. All right. And I got to go that's get fine. some defensive guys that's too. Fine. <laughs> fine. Get a couple of defensive guys. I mean, and they have other picks in five, six, and seven. I'm not yeah. saying they only have seven picks in the whole draft. No, seven in the Last first four. Last year, what they have? Six? But your they first, got seven in the first four rounds. But your year, set, but your first four round. rounds are, are your guys that you want to come in and, and you want them to contribute immediately, and you want those guys right. to be active well, on game day and not in street clothes. How many snaps did Winfrey get the other day? I don't know, 10, 5? No. Something like that. Okay. Sandy Clough, Orlando Franklin, NFL trade deadline winners and losers. Well, I guess the Rams would have to be a winner. They were the only team that made a deal. Uh, Prior to the deadline, uh, maybe New England, uh, 49ers trading for Emmanuel, Ravens, even Dolphins. How about the losers? Including perhaps the team the Broncos are facing on Sunday. That's next.